Welcome to Nordmac. Nordmac. <laughs> Should we just start You're again? A wonderful start, <laughs> aren't we? Yeah. It's going so well. It's just it's one of those days, all right? In my defense, I still can't read because um, I've had eye drops in that have made my pupils big. I don't actually know how visible that's going to be on stream, but my pupils are larger than they should be. So all lights are a lot brighter. I have in the end had to turn the big sunlight thing on that's in front of me, but it's not at max power at least, so I'm not I'm not blinded. But tonight we are joined by Talia playing a free in, Ben Newbin playing age no Hank, not no. Aegis. Not not Aegis, Hank. <laughs> and Aeon is playing Vanston. Um no. And uh, I think I think this is going to be really, really good fun. So this is a continuation of a quest where we had a different group of people on. Um, that group's had to change, uh, with the exception of uh, of Talia, unfortunately, for this. Um, but you know, Vanston and Hank have stepped up, and that is just great. Uh, I'm I'm really excited. We've not played we've not played with Vanston in ages. Um, and we've played a lot with Ben. So I don't oh, it's know Hank, sure, but... not Aegis. And hey. Hank, Hank, yeah, God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> oh wait, you genuinely, you genuinely convinced me into thinking I'd said it wrong then. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> anyway, we'll we'll get started. We'll get started. So you're not actually in this room. I've just got you in this room so you can get used to the drawing tools because you'll be using them in a bit. You're actually outside in a town, well, a former town called Bleakwash. And Bleakwash was once the site of cult sacrifices uh trying to awaken something called the engine that lived below that they believed would stock the oceans full of fish that they could uh essentially eat forever the the fish but what they awakened instead was a kraken and it killed everyone collapsed the city uh well the town anyway and the party it that met them fled well no sorry the party killed everyone the Kraken yeah. just kind of got rid of the masonry, really. The Kraken yeah, was the cover. Yeah, we on that mass murder. Yeah, you you did kill like sixty civilians, I think, in that. <laughs> was self defense? Like in a it, combat it encounter really as well. So purposefully and with intent, killed sixty civilians. <laughs> Free and you've been here a little bit longer than Vanston and uh, Hank, who are just arriving now. Um, but what you do see here that well, it wasn't here before is you see these little blue lights. They're about the size of a fist or so. And they're floating around and just sort of hovering low over the ground and just bobbing around, really, just moving from building to building. Hmm. Kind of serenely. Would you say they look arcane? 
definitely arcane. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. Uh, if you'd well, like to roll an arcana check to identify them, I think I ahead. would. Yeah. I've got to remember what the bloody numbers are. Hold on. Right, yes, fine, good. Here we go. Uh, I'm going to use the Albert, uh rolling tools. Yep. Because they're here. So, all right, that is a 23. 23. So, with a 23, you identify these pretty easily as will-o'-wisps. And right. they are ghostly undead spirits. They tend to be evil. Not always. The try to lure people uh, away and then consume their life essence. They don't seem to care about your presence, though. They're not, they don't seem to be trying to do anything. They're not reacting to you or anything like that. They're just bobbing around. Um, almost just like they're exploring. Mm. Sorry, mm -hmm. are, they, are they, like, intelligent? Uh, yes, they are. They have right. an intelligence higher than an average commoner's. Okay, okay. Okay, cool. I'm going to disregard them for now. Okay. I think Hank is probably just a bit transfixed. He's kind of mm -hmm. watching them like a cat. <laughs> uh, and that's... that's if he starts yeah. to move towards them, I will stop him. <laughs> <laughs> that's smart. That's smart. Uh, yeah. Um, eventually, a few of them sort of disappear into this decrepit building. Uh, that once looked a little bit like a church, but is now collapsed inwards. Um, Afrian, yes, you've been here long enough for a long rest. Yeah. It has Afrian and uh, Banston on a day to catch up. Yeah, has Afrian had time to scout the area then? Yeah, I'd say you, yeah. you've you scouted most of the wreckage. Um, you've seen these lights. They're not paying you much attention. Uh you have a t I tell you what, roll me a survival check. Is the whole town full of corpses still? Oh, I can do that. No, yeah, those are that? those are gone. Uh, how long ago was bleak wash in Airedale time, in Nordmark time? A month or two. Okay, with a 17, you've seen evidence that people have been here since. There's you know, there's uh like the last charcoal uh, chunks from a campfire. Uh, you've seen occasional footprints, most of them very faint. But with a 17, you can spot a couple of them, uh, but very, very old footsteps. It's like, no idea what I'm doing about that. Probably nothing. Hey, it's helpful information. So yeah, all of the wisps have now vanished into a single building, this collapsed church. Uh, you also know separately that the entrance to the catacombs under Bleakwash are over under the pier. So they're not near this church. Okay, that's weird. It's making everyone green so that Vanstone stands out. Never. Um, a friend, uh... My uh, my dad said there was lots of bodies and stuff there, right? Like, where's all the people? There's some people around, but not right now. Footprints, fires. They must have buried their own. So you're telling me that someone came along and buried like 200 bodies or something? Sure, it was 200. I don't know, dad said it was a lot. <laughs> You hear you this, um, uh, you this you hear weird octopus thing. Old voice from the church. Uh, shout. Yes, in fact, someone has been here burying every last bloody body. And this old figure uh, in, in black robes, um, scraggly gray hair, about three teeth comes hobbling out, followed by all these will-o'-the-wisps, um, and has a, it has this long, like, wooden cane that looks like, it looks like a branch that's been, you know that form of growing uh, trees where you can bend them and twist them? It looks like it's been grown like oh, that. Like a willow. Yeah. Um, and it comes, it comes out and it's like, I've been down here for months cleaning up after whatever ne'er-do-wells ruined this place. Wrecking the ecosystem. Have you seen a big octopus? Yes, I've seen the big octopus. You mean the 
It's a kraken. It's... Is it? Is it really? Yes, it's a horrifying sea monster. Oh. Uh, who Who are you, friend? Do you... Uh, have you always lived here? No, I normally live in the swamps. Where I, I care see. for these wisps. I'm a druid. Of course. Uh, very uh, public spirited of you to deal with the the bodies and so on. Thank well, you for your service. You've got to. I've always get undead. Yes, of course. There's a cav cadaver collector not far from here that's eager to get hold of any corpses it finds. I can't have that running around. Nick, uh, I rem I've encountered or heard about that thing before, right? The cadaver collector, yes, and possibly even the druid. I can't quite remember who encountered the druid, but don't know, um, the, don't know the druid. But I, no, I do remember something about the cadaver thing. So I don't think any of us were on that one. Okay, yeah, you definitely yeah. encountered the cadaver collector, though. Yeah, it was sunken okay. into the swamp on the way to the Lord of Rotten Ruin. Wait, is, is this that same druid from that same hex? <laughs> yes, the one with the wisps. <laughs> All right. Yeah. <laughs> it's that guy. This is the last time it was a snake. Yeah, but he was very, he was very, 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 very insistent that you lot not touch anything in the swamps because the ecosystem has to be perfect for the wisp. I see. In character, <laughs> I definitely met this guy. I just do not remember him at all. Okay, <laughs> that's fine. <laughs> So, uh, what, what are you doing now? All the bodies seem to be gone. Well, now I'm sort of trying to see if I can deal with that Kraken down there. It's not right being yeah. locked up. It should be freed. Cool. Do you think that wise? Would it's it not, not itself uh, wreak havoc on the ecosystem? Of course it will. It's a predator. But sometimes that's important for the ecosystem as well. Surely such a, a single large predator, so powerful, would upset the delicate balance of nature in the area. And sometimes upset like that is needed. <laughs> I like this guy. We should bring him with us. He's trying to disrupt the <laughs> ecosystem industry. <laughs> Down with big eco ecosystem. <laughs> Passive religion. Is this not a bit weird for a druid? Uh, there are druid circles that are about destruction as well. Um, ah, okay. Oh, yeah. Class-wise, you can actually pick the Circle of Wildfire, which believes that dis through destruction, regrowth happens. Um, this right. one, though, does seem a bit weird to you. Like, this doesn't seem like any of the druids you've met. I was thinking, okay, cool, cool. And the only other druid I've met is Tassel, and she's pretty chaotic too. So, hey, this guy seems fine. How do you, um, <laughs> how do you propose to release this, uh, this kraken then? Well, the problem is, it was already out. Well, it's it, it was released sort of, but then it got crushed by all the masonry, so it fled back inside. But I'm trying to see if I can open up a way so it can get out and into the ocean. But there's problems. There's a lot of people who it seems there were a group of people living in there for thousands of years and they do not take too kindly to visitors it's to be super old not the shame never mind <laughs> were they like elves or something I they heard they are get there are some elves down there, yes. The sea elves. And they also he elves, or? No, they they're... Elves? The sea! The ocean! Ocean elves! <laughs> right. Ocean elves. I've not heard of ocean I've heard of wood elves. I've heard of high That's elves. That's because they're uh... normally called she elves. Are you talking about mermaids? Not no, not mermaids. She elves. Right. Elves from the she. Okay. And they're going to they're going to help you with the kraken. Well, they seem to like it. Revere it as some sort of god, but gods should be free. And then there's just the Huigan and the the bullywugs and stuff like that. Cool. Yeah, you're well, there are a great number of of those 
in the Kraken's prison as well? There's at least 20. I see. But I didn't stay too down there too long. There's only so many spears you can get poked into you before you decide you want to go back out. Are you planning on going in there? I, 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 I just heard that a free end is coming. Yeah. Against his shell. If you're planning on going in there, maybe we can help each other out. You're going to bring your little light fellas with? No, 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 no. They're staying up here where it's safe. Got to protect them. They're delicate. But what I found, and he fishes in his sleeve, and brings out some copper bracelets. These things were in there, and they're linked to the dungeon somehow. I couldn't work them out, but there's definitely a magical link between them. I will take one or several of them from him and examine them carefully. You can definitely have three of them. Cool. Um, and you know what? Um, oh, Matthias Mercy, I think, was uh, saying there's some of these uh, things that, like, they're like magic, and they make you 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 fast and jumpy and shit. Is is this is, is that them? Like, I could I couldn't identify them, but I know that they were definitely linked because when I put one on, the door opened. Cool. Let's put them on. Okay. You put them on. Nothing happens here. You're nowhere near the door, but you, you have them on. Does anybody uh, feel a tingle? <laughs> you do feel that sort of... You, you get this tingling at the back of uh, at the back of your molars uh, whenever whenever you touch magic. Yeah, it sort of feels very unusual. a sort of static feeling at the back of your molars. So th these are magical for sure, but you can't quite tell what they do. If you don't have molars, you feel it elsewhere. <laughs> <laughs> the the, the numbing totals don't have teeth, they have beaks. Hmm. There. I've given you the way in. Now all you got to do is make sure you free that kraken. Hmm? Thank you. You've been a great help. Wait, so you're not coming? You don't want to see what's down there? I've got to look after the wisps. Bring oh. them. They'll have a great ah! time. They'll have the dark and stuff, Raises right? his cane and just sort of waves at you and then turns turns around. I'm going back to bed. Thought you were fun. Oh, come on, man. Come on. <laughs> hobbling off like that. <laughs> so I will I will slightly peel back the curtain to describe how this dungeon dungeon's gonna work. This dungeon is a little bit like uh, those JRPG dungeons that you get towards the end of the game where they're not essential for the plot, but they are like trial dungeons. This thing will go on forever. It is up to you to decide when to stop. Jesus. All right. That's I why I'm not up. drawing the map. Um, <laughs> it will go on forever. I will say it's not procedurally generated. I've handwritten all of these, but um, I just have enough that I know that you're not getting through them all in one session. Um, but you can keep go, going. Go, go. It will get harder and harder and harder and harder and harder. Uh, but the loot will get better the longer you go on. So it's entirely up to you when you call it quits. Uh, the other thing is, I will tell you for free, those bracelets can be used to teleport out of the dungeon at the end. When you when you decide you're done, they'll get you out. Okay. All right, let's do this. All right. If you'd like to enter, I will get you started. Wait, 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 wait. One sec. Anyone want to do anything before we go in? We could um, we could loot the place. We could go and find some stuff. We could go and bully that druid. <laughs> I think we should leave him alone for now. He's got yeah, a lot on his plate. His sister-in-law is a plant. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait. Okay. Yeah, you you've you've met the plant, Charlie. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, the guy who's married to a plant. Huh. Yeah, that's his. He, this is this guy's brother. Man, it's a small world. It is. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it genuinely is. <laughs> <laughs> it's not that small. It's just that we're in one tiny corner of it. <laughs> I can't go anywhere because they're just boxed in by the bounding edges of the map. It was an unfortunate polymorph incident. <laughs> You can go in whenever you uh, like. Yeah, is there anything to loot in Bleakosh before we go in? It's pretty ruined, but if you want to give me a perception check, I can get you something. 
Yeah, that works. Open. How's that? Ooh, nice. Well, okay. With a 20, I'm going to actually give you quite a bit. <laughs> uh, if you hadn't rolled out 20, you wouldn't be getting all of this. Um, you find 300 gold pieces. Ooh. Excellent. What a start. It's 100 uh, each. It's easy. Two gemstones that are worth 10 gold pieces each. One tiger okay. eye and uh they're one of my um, favorites i've already lost track <laughs> i was gonna stop course. writing it down <laughs> and four magic items Ooh. Oh, they're all potions they're not major magic items so wow three of them are basically the same so you get three potions of resistance uh one for psychic damage one for force damage and one for cold damage and one potion of water breathing. So the resistance potions grant you resistance to a damage type for a certain amount of time. Uh, one hour, I think. For psychic, cold, and what was the other one? Force. Force. So glad someone was writing that down because I lost track after the first thing that was said. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I've got it here if you need me to repeat it or anything like that, um, but yeah. What was the value of the gems? The gems, they are worth 10 gold pieces each. So two two gems worth 10 gold pieces each. Man, so that druid, he cleaned up all the bodies and didn't take any of the loot. What nope. a loser. Maybe the druid doesn't have much need for shopping. <laughs> hmm. Shinies, come on. All right. <laughs> so, uh, really tiny, it? It's so pretty. Let's go. These, um, so the dungeon shiny. bangles. Yep. Should okay. we like, clink them together like superheroes or something? You can you can try to clink them together like superheroes. Um, <laughs> so you 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 head your head into uh, the Bluecrush Catacombs and you follow uh, what is a fairly linear path to the the Sanctum's main door. Um, linear, not least because everywhere else is collapsed apart from the path that one tentacle took that was trying to kill uh, the party when they fled. And you find yourself in a room that sort of looks a bit like a cistern. Um, and there's a lot of wrecked furniture oh, around. Tight. Most of it stone, like all the wood uh, has, has rotted away. And there are these mushroom fields growing in the corners that you can see here on the map. Um, as you get closer, you see through this stone door... Um, something walk through like a ghost of a pale blue elf no hair uh they have they're they're clothed in seaweed okay and looks at all three of you and they say welcome supplicants to the sanctum of petrichor i challenge each of you to prove your worth Delve into the labyrinth and prove your love of the unceasing current. If you do not have your bands, put them on now. They will sustain you through the dungeon. With each encounter and fight and victory, you will get stronger. In Petrichor's name. And then it fades and vanishes. So you two are smart, right? Um, that was a lot of words. Um, I don't know. What is a supplicant? It's a kind of plant. <laughs> All right. Well, we've come this far. Um, I go to open the door, I guess. Okay. As you approach the door, the bracelet on your uh, on your wrist, if you're wearing it, uh, mm -hmm. glows sort of a green blue, and the door glows green blue and opens, slides open. Uh, to reveal your next room past this 10 foot wide passage uh, you see a 40 by 50 foot rectangle and remember each square is 5 feet so it's uh, 8 by 10 basically which which side is 40 and which is 50 uh, the 50 is vertical in this case right. so 40 horizontal 50 vertical and there's no wrong or right way to draw these rooms okay 
Whatever makes sense to you. I'm not going to correct you. That is just how the map is. So like that? That looks great. I would say that's correct. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. And inside, you can see the light level here is pretty good because there's actually there's lit candles. And there are eight creatures that perhaps you've never seen before. They're mm, fairly short. They're about mm, the same height as a dwarf. They're not that short. Um, so about four or five feet. They look like frogs, but they have humanoid bodies. But the heads are frogs. And they're wearing, uh, they're wearing ropes and tied seaweed around them. They're carrying nets and holding spears. They look like fishes. And they all turn to look at you and go, These are so cool. How aggressive do they look? They look confused at the moment. They, mm, okay. You get the feeling they've never seen this door open <laughs> before. Mm. But they're, they, they, so they're looking a little here? defensive, but not like they're about to attack you. Is, is this a language that any, any of us might know? Well, does anyone speak Bullywog? No. No. <laughs> 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 then it seems not. There's a lot of monster languages in the Monster Manual that are just completely separate to anything players can pick up, um, and this is one of them. Uh, funnily enough, in the Dwarven Mines, the Kruthics all speak the language Kruthic. Um, but yeah, uh, they are speaking Bullywog, and they gesture at you with their spears again and go... Ankle will just kind of mirror what's being uh, done and said, and... <laughs> And, and wave his arms around. And you go to... And they start gesturing, like, with their hands. Um, and they gesture to the south. And to the south, you can see that there's a passageway that heads... Uh, heads down into another chamber. Uh, and that chamber is a 50-foot diameter circle. <laughs> How long's the passageway? <coughs> yeah. They're all, they're all, uh, the passageway is as long as you want. That does not matter. If it ever <laughs> matters, I'll tell you. But just position it so you can just space it. Um, and that room is pitch black. That circle should be twice as big. Oh, 50 foot radius or diameter? Uh, right. Diameter. Wait, no, it was diameter, wasn't it? Mm, yeah. Okay. I'm wrong. Carry on. It's fine. And they're all gesturing with their spears in that direction and sort of looking at you again expectantly. I will proceed in that direction. Okay. Ankle gives him the thumbs up and go. <laughs> what was that, Talia? Sorry? Is there anything else in this room? Well, as you as you head in, has anyone got dark vision? Mm-hmm. Nope. Okay. I meant in the room that with the bullywogs. Oh, in the room you're in? Uh, so the room you're in with the Bullywugs, you can see... Yeah, in here, uh, this looks like a, a sort of stronghold. It's got a lot of weapons on the walls. Um, there are a couple of chests as well. While you're here, you can also smell manure. Um, and you can hear scuttling nearby. And the Bullywugs got a... Uh, they got a poop somewhere, so... Yeah, there is. Uh, while you're while you're noticing around the room and looking around, there is a door in the northern wall as well. Um, it's closed, so you don't know what's behind it. I think. But yeah, as you're as you're heading south, um, what you can see in there, this is a this is an unusual room. It because what you're seeing is a lot of cloths a lot of fabrics velvets and silks draped in this circle around a 10 foot circular pedestal in the center and in that center sat upon this pedestal looking extremely glum and grumpy is a giant toad we're talking larger than a human a, a, a living giant toad. Oh yeah, a living giant toad is just sort of sat there going. Bruh, bruh, bruh. I think we're supposed to go and talk to the big one. It would seem that way. 
ankle um, ankle gives a thumbs up to the buddy walks <laughs> and they go bah, 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 and they gesture towards the, the giant toad again so Big you head smile. in you head in and you and you see uh the giant toad as you're as you're now closer in the room what you can also see is the ground is strewn with coins probably a thousand coins on the ground here maybe even more and the giant toad just looks at you all um from its high plinth and just goes Bleb. ribbit <laughs> right uh, hmm. This is probably a bad idea. But I want to pick up a coin uh, and just look at it. Uh, and I want to see how, like, how old it is. Okay. The moment you touch a coin. Yeah. The giant toad. Let me just double check. Uh, leaps off of the plinth and makes a really loud croaking noise. And... I'll drop the coin. <laughs> Gets right up close to you and looks looks you up right right up close. Um, and obviously it's you have uh, my apologies. Neck is going. Rrr, 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 rrr. I'm going to I'm going to roll. Tell you what, actually, roll me persuasion Incredible. for this for this for this apology to the giant. That's toad. Uh, that is not something I have got us in. Let's have a look. Can I assist by just like chucking 25 gold pieces? <laughs> oh, are you donating uh, gold pieces? I am. Okay. Yeah, you can roll with advantage. Uh, you can roll with advantage, Vanston. Incredible. All right. Well, I'm keeping that 14, I guess. Okay. <clears throat> you get the feeling it's not happy with you, but it's also not immediately attacking you, which is probably cool. a win. <laughs> I will not do anything. That's all. For a it's bit. Just <laughs> staring you down is going. Rrr, 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 rrr. You see that a couple of the bullywogs are closing in on the room behind you with their spheres. Uh, okay. I'm gonna like try and ignore the toad as much as possible and look around the room a bit, just visually around the room a bit more. Is there anything else interesting in here? Um, I yeah. I don't have dark vision, by the way. I was hoping to use... I didn't say this. I have a gem of brightness, which I wanted to use to try and see around a bit. Okay, yeah, you can use that. That's fine. Cool. Um, so you can see around, and what you can see, actually, now that the toad is off of the pedestal, there is something left behind there. There's a conical shell. It's large. It's quite bright, sort of pink and gold. Okay. Looks like it might be precious. But it's also, it looks like the kind you can blow into. Okay. Anchor, you wants to blow in that shell. Of course. <laughs> How much do you want to do that? <laughs> I will put some tokens down for the bullywogs just so we can track where they are, just in case. Um, so I will just use aberrations because they are disgusting little gremlins so i think uh, hang is going to continue acting like a, a bully wog and, and, and go like jump around a bit flap his arms and go, towards the um the giant toad okay i mean to select two at the same time um is, that, is is there anything else in this room apart from coins on the floor the there's coins, um, there's the plinth, there's a lot of fabrics that look, um, they look really expensive fabrics. Are there any, like, um, patterns or imagery on the fabrics? Yes, there is. Um, would you, well, uh, the fact that I, I, I can say you get, you get the pattern immediately. Um, the pattern is a lot of, uh, flowing, uh, symbols such as you see on some of them there's water with waves in there's some that are almost like currents of wind there's some also that are uh, music as well mm. sort of looking like sheet music something we had a bard are there any like exits to this room other than when we came in yes i should probably have mentioned that <laughs> <laughs> um <laughs> There are there are three exits, so one in each cardinal direction of this room. Right. 
Um, to the east, you can see a T-junction, um, and you can't see past there. To the south, you can see a rectangular room um, that looks like a cistern of some kind again. And to the west, you can see a long, straight corridor that leads to a small rectangular room that has a little web webbing about it. Nice. And none of those are blocked by doors, so you can just see straight into them. Um, this this giant toad would would that count as an animal for the purposes of speak with animals? Yes, would... giant toads definitely do count yeah. as because uh, what you need is a beast, and they are beasts. Okay. Um. Well, I mean, uh, it would take ten minutes to ritually cast a spell, so we have that option for Hank if if we want to try and converse with the giant toad but 10 minutes is quite a long time it's your choice i would i would like to move on if we can but i don't know like does the toad seem like it wants us um, wants us to do anything or wants anything from us it's a little happier now that it's gained some gold so <clears> maybe <throat> you can appease it by giving it gifts or if you would like more information you can roll an insight check Let's insight the toad. Hmm. Um, how do I add stuff to my rolls in this? Uh, there is and a this plus or minus, plus minus on the left that lets you add a modifier. Under the eye. Oh, I see it. Okay, eyes. great. Cool. Well. <laughs> That's a number. <laughs> yeah. <Yay. laughs> 26. Okay. You've seen this before in people, this kind of person. This is someone who considers themselves to be above everybody. They mm. are taking essentially the, the the place of nobility here. They are the Bullywug's leader, um, and they are relishing in... They relish in things like attention, gifts. They're not particularly bright, but very clearly anyone flattering them is going to get far. The, the difficulty is the language barrier. Um, mm. But gifts seem to certainly be working. You may not okay. need to be giving gold. It may be any gift works, but mm. gold certainly seems to work. We do have those new shiny stones that we found outside. Mm -hmm. Could try offering those. Yeah, I'm. Uh, I'm going to offer one. Of, I'm going to very ostentatiously offer one of the stones. Fantastic. Uh, roll me performance with advantage. Oh, no. With advantage, though, because you are offering advantage. a gift. Yeah. Great. Uh, uh, That's good. 16 is good. Cool. Yeah, the toad will accept that. It backs away a little bit. Um, and it sort of grabs the stone with its tongue and drops it on the <laughs> on its pile, <laughs> and then hops back up onto onto the plinth and goes. Bruh, 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 bruh. Great. Um, and the Bullywogs back away a little bit. They're happy. Sorry, I've just moved you. Oh, I'm moving everything. Everything's moving. Okay. So, um, Hank has seen spaces like this before. To him, this looks like a performance arena. And he is a gladiator. That's and quite likely. He, um, he immediately thinks, wait a minute, giant toad, performance arena. This is asking for a war dance. So he starts just uh, <laughs> hopping around like a like a giant toad, and and doing like swing maneuvers and and flips and and just trying to entertain the uh, the host of this space. Okay, I like that. I like that. That'll be a performance check, please. All right, come on, chunk. That is a six. <laughs> Okay, unfortunately, the <laughs> dance you're making is looking to the toad like you are threatening it. Oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> and it is rearing up again, and the bullywogs are getting closer. And I am going to, like, yeah. stop him doing this, like, <laughs> intervene physically. Like, no, you know, in such a way that it's obvious that, like, you know, 
what I'm doing. Does that make sense? And okay, okay, that, okay, that makes when, sense. When Hank finishes, he will like spread out his arms and have a, a gem in each hand. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, now you're talking. Now you're talking the Toad's language. The Toad looks a little happier again. The Bullywogs return again. <laughs> <laughs> they start, you, hear, you hear some grumbling behind you. Okay. I, I, I think we've maybe seen enough. Uh, maybe we should, like, I'm going to gesture to the party to head towards the, the west. Okay. Angle but bell. slowly, <laughs> non-threateningly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, and you're, you're, you're allowed to, you're allowed to leave. Um, and... As you move through this corridor uh, to the west, you encounter a 30 by 40 rectangular room. And this one is pristine, so you can actually tell what it was originally for. It was an animal pen. Uh, there's no animals left in it. Oh, that's the east. If you're going east, I can no, tell you what's the west. Yeah, 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 sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah, that's my fault. Well, let's go this way. Fine. Um, so yeah, there's a 30 by 40 rectangle at the end of this corridor. Um, again, the orientation that doesn't matter. It's up to you. Um, okay. It was a an animal pen where they kept... Maybe you get the feeling that there were arenas here and maybe they'd keep the animals that they fought against in the arena um, in these pens. And yeah, it's, it's pristine. It's in its original state. You can hear a little bit of scratching in the distance, but it could just be the bullywugs moving around, to be honest. Um, the air is a bit misty and it's a little cold. There's a brazier in the center of the room, um, filled with charcoal still. And there's dense webbing in the northwest corridor. Uh, north, not corner, not corridor. Dense webbing in the northwest corner. Webbing like in the spidery sense? Yeah, spider webs. Okay. Like properly dense, like probably about a five foot cube of it. Whoa. Hmm. Um, I light the the brazier with my tinder box. Okay. You light the brazier. So now you can see really well. Um there are two doors coming out of this room. Um there is an iron portcullis in the southern wall. And there's a lever right next to it. So you're on the right side of it. <laughs> and there is a wooden door in the western wall. The, is there anything on the floor or like in the webbing? If you would like to have a look in the webbing, you can. You make me a perception check. One of these days, I'll make a character that actually has good perception. Nah, I will also a take a look at the webbing. That's yeah, okay, yeah, you can both have a look. Just uh, out of interest. What was your role, Hank? Eight. Okay, Hank, you're slightly stuck in the webbing. You're not actually <laughs> stuck, but you, can, you it's all over you. you have you ever tried? Have you ever tried? Close. Yeah, have you ever tried making like um, pizza dough or something like that? It's quite a sticky <laughs> dough, and you, oh, no. once you start working it, you can't get it off your hands at all. You just transfer it to one hand and then to the other, and you're just stuck like that it, it, internally. It's in my um, beard. It's in my eyebrows. Yeah. 21. <laughs> okay. Vanston, while Hank is ripping apart this webbing, uh, trying to get it off of him, you spot mm. a small leather pouch that is concealed in this webbing. Like, how deep in the webbing are we talking? It's not deep at all now. <laughs> it was, Great. but Hank's kind of ripped it apart. You think you can just grab that without a problem? I will I will go and I will, I will take a look at it. Yes, okay. I'll, I'll pick it up. In that pouch is 50 gold pieces. Great, I will uh, extricate the dwarf as well. Yeah, um, yeah, Hank was getting like absurdly close to the brazier there and you were, you were aware that webbing is flammable. Mm. Teamwork! <laughs> <laughs> Good. But yeah, uh Hank, you're unwebbed now, you're all fine. Uh, and yeah, you've gained fifty gold pieces. Nice. Your Great. bracelets also glow and they glow white. And you feel energy pulse through you. And this is where the second half of the mechanic uh that these um bracelets provide you. 
after two encounters of any kind, does not have to be combat, as we've just seen, you've done two social encounters, you automatically gain the benefits of a short rest. Oh, uh, nice. that's good. Ooh, that's, wow. I will let you know for uh, posterity, after six, you automatically gain the benefits of a long rest. Ooh. I have to come back on a short rest. Uh, nothing. <laughs> You can still, if you want to, take short rests or long rests. Uh, but I will warn you, you'll probably have to defend the room you're in. Uh, like, mm -hmm. fortify it, essentially. Um, but that's still possible. I'm not taking that option away from you. It's just that instead of having to worry about it, you can keep going like that along this pacing. Okay, so in this room, we've got the brazier, we've got the webs, uh, we've got the two doors, the lever. Yeah. Is there anything else? Uh, Is there anything that... else that we can see? That is it in this room. Um, cool. So there's there's some there's some iron barred cages uh, that look fine, but there's nothing in them. They've been mm -hmm. cleared out and they're just empty and open. Okay. Where's all the spiders? That That's is a great question. question. Where are all the spiders? Mm. Mm. Hank's gonna go and look through the portcullis. Okay. Yeah, you can stare through the portcullis. Um, the passageway that you're looking down, um, from your perspective, turns left. And then you can't see any further. Mm. Okay. Uh, I've done the wrong colours. Uh, can't see much there. I'm gonna go over there. I'm gonna pull the lever. Okay. The with a clunking, loud clunking noise that sort of echoes around the uh, the dungeon. Um, the portcullis rises. You do get the feeling that people heard that. Sorry, we heard that. Mm -hmm. I mean, you heard that, but also certainly the bullywogs heard that. Um, That's maybe fine. other things have heard that as well. But yeah, um, you can head through. So that right turn leads actually to this room here. Oh, okay. And oh, to the, um, to the big system. Okay, cool. Yeah, to the big system. Um, if you're heading into there, you can see in this room, there's this large pool of water and it covers almost the entire floor. So there's a five foot walkway around the perimeter of the room and the rest is this pool of water that's about 20 feet deep um the air here is damp obviously um a bit dank a bit moldy uh there's no furnishings here you think this is probably to collect overflow water because you are now technically below sea level i don't know it looks a bit like a toilet should we go and check out that other door sounds like a plan can do. I think we should check the other door before we start messing around in the in the water level. Yeah. Yeah, I don't want to go in that giant toad's bath or something. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, let me just see who it's targeting as you turn away. Okay. A free in. I need to check the rules for this. I think I need a wisdom save. A wisdom save. Sure, it's not intelligence. I'm not feeble minding you. It is definitely a wisdom save. <clears throat> 15. That is enough. You're fine. So you hear this voice in your mind give you instructions. Um, so you hear the instructions. You can understand what those are, but you are not in any way compelled to do them. And the instructions that it gives you are to go to the east where on this floor lies a dreadful abomination and destroy it. Mm. But you're fine. So Excellent. that that was the spell. Uh, Gius, which otherwise would have been very bad for you. Because <laughs> if you decided oh, okay. not to do that, it would have been 5d10 psychic damage each time you don't go and immediately do it. Oh, fuck. Wow. Yeah. It's a fifth level spell. Yeah, I was thinking that. <laughs> He's the thing that Emphasis character has. Yep. <laughs> um, but yeah, you're, you're, you're fine. You do not feel compelled to do that. You have the information, but you don't feel compelled to do it. So, uh, yeah, if you're going over to the other door, uh, who's trying to open it? Uh, probably Hank. Yeah, Hank. Hank okay, Hank. Uh, it doesn't open. I yank it really hard. All right, give me a strength check, please. All right, I'm good at these. Come on. That is a 10. And the chonk is going away. How does that make you feel, Hank? 
it's it's really jammed really really jammed tight it is um, it's it's stuck yeah yeah it might actually even just be a wall it maybe it's not even a real door it's <laughs> definitely a door the rest of you are aware this is a door however you've heard that people sometimes bar doors and that maybe this is what has happened mm. i'm pretty sure it's it's a wall it may even just be locked. You don't know. Like, yeah. it may even just Can be a push door, locked? and Hanks just. <laughs> uh, there no, is no lock mechanism in this Let's case. Go back once to you the get pool closer, room because this is definitely just a wall. Like... <laughs> it's a wall made of wood, right? Yeah, yeah it's, it's it, it probably is one of those like fake doors. They're just uh, having us on, you know. Uh, just. Uh, for reference, did Afrian say anything about the geese voice? Nope. Okay. Hmm? Afrian keeps keeps cards close to his chest. Totally fine. Yeah. So the pool's probably fine. You, you can go in that room if you want. It's probably great. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, well, Vassin, you'll be fine. Like, like, wisdom saves, they, they're right, right up your alley. We'll, we'll have to go and check it out eventually, so we might as well mm. head down there. Yep. Okay. Otherwise, we could burn down that door. Yeah, that's possible. You wood. can do that. I, wait, 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 wait. This whole room is full like of these just, yeah. um, webs. Like, um, I'm, I, and I'm still got quite a few on me. Uh, Maybe the spiders. Just stay out of the web and don't <clears throat> breathe. Maybe they lock the door, Hank. <laughs> <laughs> is there a keyhole in the door? No. So it's either stuck or barred. It's a wall. Okay, let's go to the pool room. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. As we go closer, I, I do tell them. I do tell you all that. Okay. A voice told me to to do a murder in here. Oh. I use those words. Um, do a murder. Uh, talking about secrets, right? Um, Matthias Murf Mercy uh, gave me this uh, scroll to give to you. Um. He said I wasn't allowed to read it, but he didn't say I wasn't allowed to read it with you. I'm not sure that's a real loophole. I mean, like, you can read it too. I think me. reading it... Ah, yes, that's true. Does, um, does it look like a spell scroll? It's it does not like look a like a spell, spell scroll. It looks like a regular scroll. It's quite... It's quite ornate. Um, but uh, when no. you... If you, if you, are you opening it and looking at it? Sure. Yeah. Why not? It is. Yeah, I'm not even is. sure why he told me not to read it because I can't read his fucking writing anyway, mate. It's ornate. It's it's very fine calligraphy, um, and it takes you a good five minutes to understand what he's trying to say because he's using <laughs> every. He's definitely hit this really hard with a thesaurus before um before finishing, um. But you eventually get the gist that you have been banned from the library. Uh, your crime oh, is I made for him. spilling a lot of salt water over a lot of precious books. Now, you're sure you didn't do that? Yeah, no, I didn't. So are you I getting the blame for someone else? Hmm. Russell. <laughs> I mean, well, yeah. <laughs> Fine, blame it on my character. Yeah. <laughs> so that's your complication from your downtime, obviously. Um, Excellent. Yeah, so you can you can head into you can head into the water the water cistern. Um if you it if you would like. You have been warned by a free in though, so it's it's up to you. Does does anyone get like brain problems as a result of going down here? Yeah, so I think Hank, you were in the you were in front. So can I have a wisdom save, please? Oh yeah. Honestly, um, this is the party to be making wisdom saves though. Like Barbarian well, is it They've got mm. wisdom save for proficiency, I'm pretty sure, because wisdom's no. their second stat. <laughs> Do they not? Barbarians? That's their spellcasting stat. I say spellcasting, cast but spellcasting. Spell they can. They just can't do it while, while raging. That's why Hank's got speak with animals. Okay. They're like if a fighter was a that drone. one? That one. Great. Okay. Excellent. So you have you are now under the effects of a uh, a guess, which um. Amazingly, oh, Vanston as well, because the DC was 15. Nice. Um, 
so yeah, you both feel extremely compelled. You feel this deep, important uh, importance to go to the east and kill this abomination. You don't know what it is, but you know it's something that doesn't belong here. It's like, not the toad, no right? Is like the toad is east of where we are now, but it is not the toad. Yeah. Yeah, Hank no longer cares about the the toilet or bath water that he's trudging through and just charges all the way across the room. So one other thing, you are charmed. Um, If you can't be charmed, you are not subject to this. But I think both of you can be. Um, I think it's only elves that gain immunity to being charmed. So yeah, just do what it says or you take 5d10 psychic damage. Is there an exit to the east? Uh, Let me get the map up. Uh, no. Right. You have to go by uh, by your best friend again. <laughs> sure. I'm sure that'll be fine. I will head towards the, the northern exit then. Uh, it has its back turned to you at the moment. It's like it hasn't noticed you're uh, coming coming through. Cool. I would simply see that natural. That shell on the, on the plinth behind it. Can I do like a quick look around as we go through? Sure. In the, in the system. Um, yeah, you can see some mushroom fields uh, are, glow- are growing in the corners. Um, mm-hmm. But otherwise, this is a pretty sort of Spartan room. This is a sort of oh, storm overflow sort of place. You know, if there's been flooding in the dungeon in the top level, it'll go to here instead of flooding the lower levels. So it's pretty it's pretty form over function, this room. No, function over form, even. Sure. Okay. Form from function. I think Hank runs full on straight into the far wall. <laughs> he just assumes if he keeps on going, he's going to get to the thing that he's supposed to be killing. Make me <laughs> <laughs> a constitution saving throw, please. Hank. Okay, this I do have um, proficiency. Yeah. Um, is this against poison? No. Oh, good. <laughs> Is it against the wall? Is this, <laughs> yes. Is this against something I can see? This is against concussion. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> All right. So, um, wait. Uh, <laughs> Hank is very oh, different no. to his father. Oh no! This is Dex save. Uh, I have uh, advantage. On, okay. Right. So plus four on that. Oh, that is a twenty-three. Twenty-three. You're fine. You're you're not going to take a point of exhaustion from battering your head against a wall. <laughs> as fast as you can okay guys this one definitely is a wall (laughs) the funny thing is if you tried that on the door there's a good chance you'd have just broken it down but no just try it on the stone instead it's fine the the, the wall door was to the to the west this is to the east okay (laughs) can only run in one direction got it okay when he's done yeah with that I'm gonna maneuver through the uh through the thing yeah so you you will, you will go through what is a robing room uh ignoring the the dm's hints that you should try and steal the shell because he really wants uh, some chaos to happen and <laughs> and go you go through sensibly and smartly i'm, I'm not you saying it was bad the had some sort of use yeah, well it might <laughs> maybe it does i uh, know <laughs> so either side of this uh, t-junction you've got two wooden doors so north or south which way do you want to go east which way is yeah which way does the the east want us to go wait hang just have another mm. constitution save it wants no he didn't have go- enough of a runoff on this one but he's gone <laughs> and like pressed against the wall it wants you <laughs> let me just double check to go south mm, okay well enough we go then okay so the wooden door opens there's a left turn um and then a long straight, and then you reach a 40-foot square room. This door just opens. Yeah, that door's fine. Not all of them are barred. <laughs> all walls. Some of them are all rogues. Walls. Yeah, some of them are rogues. Um, so this room was once a torture chamber, and some of the implements still line the walls. There's these terrible-looking hooks and um, horrendous chains from the ceiling that are caked in blood even to this day. You can't see anything in this room, though, um, other than, you know, implements. There's 
like matted piles of seaweed in the corner. Um, there's a large cask. Uh, this is a, a pipe, it's called, but it's a, a large cask. It's the kind that's about 10, 10 foot across, right? One of those huge ones. Um, and that's lying on its side. Uh, and that's lying on its side against the north wall. And the pile of um, seaweed is in this corner here. So that's the southwest. Um, and yeah, there's chains dangling down from the ceiling that makes sort of moving through it a little bit difficult. It's not too bad. It's not quite difficult terrain, but you, you know, you feel it. It's like you're constantly walking through a chain curtain. Okay. I don't know what my dad was so bothered about with this place. This is rad. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and they jingle as you go through. But yeah, you can't see anyone in here. Okay. What do I see if I look directly up? Uh, a lot of chains. A lot of chains on the ceiling. Uh, make me a perception check. I'm going to jangle some of the chains. Okay. They make a somewhat pleasant jangling sound. <laughs> That's a uh, 15. <laughs> 15. Okay. Uh, you can see among the chains, there is a... It's like someone stashed something up there. It's um, an old kind of matted adventurer's satchel. Um, Immediately up, start climbing. Up there tangled in the chains. Yeah, you can climb, you can climb the chains up there. Yeah, um, and, and you, you get to it. Absolutely. So we're going to say you're about... Uh, so these chains are quite long. So the ceiling here is about 40 feet high. Unless, unless I say otherwise, the ceilings are always the size of the smallest distance in the room. So this being a square, it's evil one, so they're 40 feet high. Um, mm -hmm. And you start climbing up, but that's no problem at all. You're an accomplished climber. You're not going to need to make a check for this. This is chains. This is easy. Um, you're about 20 feet up uh, in and climbing uh, and getting pretty close to the bag when the pile of seaweed gets up. <laughs> Is this activating my gayest sense? Yes, it is. <laughs> and you f are faced. Well, I'm not going to give it a name until one of you identifies it. Because <laughs> this is something I don't think any of you have ever seen before. Uh, I think the closest cool. possibly might be a free in. A free in might have seen one. This is an aquatic creature of type, but it is something aberrant to this plane. Oh, does that mean it would be arcana or religion rather than nature, for example? You can give me arcana for sure. It wouldn't be a religion, but you can definitely give me arcana. Um, no problem. People who want to give me nature checks can also do nature. Um, it's sort of a mix yeah, between the both. Arcana as well. Yeah, definitely arcana. 21, yeah. That's, <laughs> that's, that's fine. Absolutely. Let me give it its name. So, Vanston, you you see the telltale signs of a sea hag. Not a sea hag. Sea hags sea hag. are. They are well. Essentially, they're all those witch stories. They come mm. from hags of of various kinds. Sea hags are. They almost look like ghouls a little bit. They look like. Um, undead almost with how emaciated they are and with their sort of very pale almost translucent skin and mm. their hair is seaweed uh, and they're clothed in seaweed are and they undead they are not undead they are fey but they okay. look like undead like you know the girl from the ring like they mm -hmm. look like that but with seaweed instead of hair um okay. yeah very you have startled the witch sort of vibes coming from it and they do look horrifying. Um, and they are from the extra planar, did you say? Yeah, they're from the Feywild. Right. Um, but they often come uh, to the material plane. They are obsessed with the material plane. Uh, they like drowning sailors, which is why, uh, okay. Freed, you might have heard of them. Right. Um, but yeah, they are pretty scary on their own, but they're even scarier if you meet a coven of them. You're lucky that this appears to be an individual. Ooh, and the sea hag well. is reaching towards you. Hank, you are 20 feet up and climbing, <laughs> and that's where we're going to roll initiative. 
I reach the, the bag. <laughs> Not yet. You're <laughs> 20 feet away, so you've got a choice. Um, so Albert's updated a few things recently, including like making extensions of things work a little bit, bit better. You can now right click your token and there will be an option that says um, add to initiative. Uh, if you click that, that will appear in the initiative tracker in the top left and you can then mm -hmm. roll your initiative as you would like and update the number. You can update the number yourself. I will roll for the sea hack. Um, but we're coming up to nine o'clock. It might be a good time for a break. It's a little earlier than we usually do, but I'll tell you what, we can do one round of combat. We'll get, we'll get started with it. And what have I got finished here? 15. I'll your dex monofile. Hank. Mm, plus two. Ah, oh, you go before me. Okay. No, wait, I'll go. Okay. That'll do. So, Vanston, you're oh. up first, but before mm. you do anything, I need a wisdom saving throw. As this creature's horrific appearance is terrifying you. Cool. That's that's fine. One sec. Okay. You're fine. You're Great. absolutely fine. Um for future reference, it doesn't apply on the first round, but in future rounds, you can choose to avert your eyes so that you don't have to make the saving throw, because otherwise you'll have to do it at the start of every turn. Wow. No, no, sorry. No, you are now immune to the effect. Sorry. Okay, great. Cre creatures in the future who don't want to make this uh, save should they, you know, become frightened, um, they can avert their eyes. But for you, you're fine. You're immune. You've steeled yourself. You know what this creature is, and you know it can be beaten. Yeah, um, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Okay, go for it. Cool. Um, I will go for it uh, using... Uh, <laughs> I'm going to experimentally Sacred Flame. Okay. I think. <laughs> Just to see how that, how that does. Uh, has Solonson's done this? That's just a flat D8, isn't it? Uh, I believe so, yeah. There's no... Yeah, it's a hit roll or anything, yeah. Eight. Let me just double check with Sacred Flame. It might be I have to do a save. Yes, you indeed. do have to do a save. It's like yes. a dex save or something, I think. Right. Let me do. Let me do a dex save. I'm not good at dex, so. This that's, is why it never works in Celesta. That's a nine. So you you go for the damage. Uh, that was a full. Was that six damage? That was eight damage. Eight damage, even better. Um, very nice. Uh, excellent. So I'm just going to track that here. Where I've gone. Okay, excellent. Great. Does it look it, like super dis super inconvenienced by that? Or is it, it just like, damn, that hurt? It was like, damn, that hurt. Um, sure, it certainly no took problem. pain. It's not resistant, but it's not vulnerable mm -hmm. to it. Okay. Yeah. Um, anything else? No. Okay, we go to the hag. Right. No one is currently afraid of her, so she can't do the special thing. <laughs> <laughs> but who knows, that might change. Um, actually, yeah, she's just going to stand there staring at the three of you, and she's going to ready an action. Hank, over to you. Can I have a wisdom saving throw, please? 16. 16, you've passed. You're also immune. Damn. Okay. What are you doing? You're 20 feet up. Um, you are climbing, and I don't believe you've got a climbing speed currently, so it will be double movement to get back down. Um, hmm. Or you can drop and take 2d6 damage. So, I mean, uh, the, the problem there is that I only have 25 feet movement, uh, so I'd have to dash. If you drop, it takes no movement. be able to get to the floor. Mm. Um, and if you rage, you'll half that incoming damage, because it's bludgeoning, you know get angry, drop to the ground, and then go whack. <laughs> I'm the devil on your shoulder here. <laughs> Can I jump from here? You would still take the damage if you jump yeah. from there. Yeah. But if I jump, can I jump? Well, like swing on the... Yeah, no, I like that. I like that. I might take yeah. an athletics check to get through the chains as, yeah, you're, uh, as you're swinging. Um, oh my god! Can I George in a jungle it and like proper like Tarzan <laughs> swing through? Mm. Yes. Give me an athletics check to do it, but yes, you absolutely no, I'm can. Definitely doing that. 
Okay. Um, athletics, that's fine. That is an 18. 18 is great. Yeah, that's fine. So you can get through there. Um, uh, and I'm going to say that's not going to cost you any extra movement to get through like that because that was cool. Uh, you are still 20 feet up, of course, but progress. So, um, and then I am just... Uh, wait, that was... That was... That's 15 feet of movement. And then I can climb down five feet so then I'm 15 feet off the floor. Okay. Is that is that still 2d6 if I drop from there? Uh, it'll be 1d6 from there. 1d6. Okay. And then I will drop with my great... Grab my great sword out as I'm falling and try and <laughs> slam it down onto the seat. <laughs> yes! <laughs> well, first of all, the damage you take is free bludgeoning damage. Okay. Um, uh, oh, sorry. Yeah. I should have also said I was um, going to rage. Okay, so you use your bonus action to rage and then drop. That's great. That's fine. So half that incoming damage. So one. It is round down, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Okay. And then... What is it? Uh, plus five to hit. That is a 16. That hits. Roll damage. Okay. 2d6 plus three. That is seven. Um, what is it? Slashing damage. Nice. Good bit of damage. Anything else? I think that's. I mean, it's all just your yodeling as this is going. Like, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Over to Afrian. Afrian, can I have a wisdom saving throw, please? Uh, probably. Actually, sorry, that's it would have been nine good. damage because I forgot my rage damage as well. Oh, I'll increase. Very good. You're all immune to that. That's so annoying. <laughs> uh, yeah, you're um, all immune. Okay, go for it. Excellent. I move down here. Then... I use my action to activate my little critter who pops out from under the hat. Starts looking angry and then it's, it's you know, gill frills glow all light. Oh, yeah. It's your turret. Um, <laughs> and in it, does a big inhale and, like, basically does a Kirby boil while firing, you know, a, a, a blob, a watery blob. This is uh, the Force Ballista. Nice. That's going to be a lot of damage, if I remember rightly. Uh, 2d8. Yeah, that's a lot of damage. If it hits. That doesn't hit, I'm afraid. So that f force bolt just goes straight past and the hag ducks under it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, yeah, that's my turn. Okay. At initiative count 20, now that we're in the main combat round, the first lair action takes place. And uh -oh. she waves a hand and... This passageway seals shut with stone and water rises from the floor. It is currently five feet deep. It is, you have to swim for it. What? That was fast. Yeah, it goes, she's conjuring this uh, out of the air. Well, not even out of the air because there's not enough moisture in the air. She's literally creating water around her. Shit. Yeah. Uh, you're not underwater for the purposes of combat just yet. You're sort of just over it. Uh, I will get the underwater rules for you, uh, should that happen, uh, which it will happen soon. All right. Uh, I am not drowning yet, so nope. I'm not going to attempt to chug the potion, which I'm going to assume that I have. Otherwise, yeah, that's it's very, very yeah, awful. Yeah, has underwater breathing anyway, right? Mm-hmm. No, but he can hold his breath for an hour. Oh, that's crazy. I properly thought you could you could breathe in the water. Okay. No, no, my other turtle can, but this one can't. Oh. Wow. Um okay. I am going to do a spell, but I've forgotten the name of it, so I need to look it up. Okay. It's called Guiding Bolt. Ha <laughs> ha. That's a great spell. 
let me just remember what it does. Right, range spell attack. Great. Okay. Um, so I'm going to need to... Uh, what is my uh, bonus for that? Is that my spell attack bonus? Yes. yes. That'll be your spell attack. Cool. Um, and it's against it, just against its AC, right? Yep, that's right. Fine. That hits no, nice. easily. Great. Yeah. Okay, it's going to take... Good God. Um, yeah. <laughs> a <laughs> it's lot. a great spell. One sec. Right, so... <laughs> Yeah, that's a, that was in just a normal level one slot, so it's going to be taking... 16 damage. Wow. Uh, yeah, uh, it is now bloodied, so um, you can see that this... Uh, mat it's almost like a matted, clear, translucent slime coming out instead of blood. Um, looks a bit like sea foam. Wow. The next attack roll made against the hag uh, has advantage. Okay. Well, that's going to be very helpful for Hank. <laughs> <laughs> uh, free reckless attack. Uh, anything else? Uh, I'm good for now. Okay. Sea hag is going to run around you, Hank, and is going for Vanston because you've just done a huge Vanston. amount of damage. Don't like that. Nope. Uh, so gonna swipe at you with these huge claws, like really long, um, again, horror movie style claws. And let's see what we get. Uh, natural 18, so a 23, that's going to hit. That is a hit. And... <clears throat> 12 points of slashing damage. Oh, that's, that's more Ooh. than I would like. Uh, yeah, these are really long, really dangerous claws. Um, that is her turn, though. And we go to Hank. Didn't need the, uh, um, the guarding bolt in the end anyway, because we've been in uh, flanking <laughs> rules now. She's moved into a flanking position now, yeah. <laughs> All right. Okay, Hank. Taste great sword. <laughs> okay, that first roll's a 23. And the second roll is also a 23. So that hits. Uh, Absolutely. One, two, D6 plus uh, five. That is oh, 15 damage. 15 damage. <laughs> uh, very good. Very good. This hag has not got much left. Not, mu not got much left at all. <laughs> You're up, and reaching out at you with this anger. A free in over to you. Excellent. I throw my spear at the hag. Okay. Um, Move in, you can have an advantage. Join the party, you're free. Come on. But, Not if it's but thrown. Throwing. But throwing. Throw it. It'll be fine. Ignore him. I like throwing. Yeah, you know I throw it, because that's 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 a yeah. friend's magic spear. Okay, so thrown attacks are with strength. Yep. That's not going to work. That's a natural one. Yeah, mm -hmm. so the spear just goes flying and it sticks into the crevice in the stone here, which used to be a door. Sticks in there. Excellent. And, and then it And then comes it comes back. back. <laughs> Cause it is, it is a magical <laughs> returning spear because you are an artifice so you've You've imbued yes. it with magic. Um, and, but um, it does yeah. miss. <laughs> and then the uh, the little axe, little critter takes another deep breath in and releases another blast, and that's a lot that better. Hits. That does hit, yeah. Roll damage. This might be enough. Might. It's the wrong dice. So as the sea hag is distracted by the spear, turns away this bolt. Oh, Jesus oh. Christ! A force damage <laughs> from straight into straight into her back, and yeah, she collapses dead. Um, that good lord, Follows that was the spear quick. into the wall. Um, <laughs> as you complete combat encounters, I'm going to give out XP for them as we go, because otherwise my ability to track is going to be in the toilet. Uh, a sea hag is worth 450 experience points. 150 each. 
150 each. Yeah. Excellent. Uh, and you are the uh, the gas is lifted. <laughs> hey, that was great. I'm free. <laughs> you demolished everything. Nice. <laughs> it's all the water gone. Uh, the water is gradually draining out as well. Yeah. Cool. Right, I'm going to uh, climb back up that chain. Sure. Yeah, you climb up and you and you get the bag. While you're in here, though, you also see um, when this door opens, another door in the eastern wall opens, uh, or the wall sort of drops an illusion there, uh, revealing a passageway into a large 40-foot square room. Cool. And now let me get you the contents of that pack. So in that pack, there are... Wow, there absolutely is not what I've just rolled. You are not having that. Holy fuck. <laughs> oh. I've got a little treasure roller that just goes, you know, this is roughly what you should be giving out, but it just went four magic items. Like, no, I don't think so. <laughs> I'm like, mean, Nick. Good magic oh, items. No so like headband of intellect. <laughs> Two oh, plus one that. weapons and an instrument of the bards. No, <laughs> that is not what is in there. You get... Oh, yeah, let's give you... Oh, they're rare, but they are cool. Let's give you... Yeah, that's that's thematic. Uh, you have a little token in the shape of a feather. And on that feather, inked on it, is an anchor. So this is Qual's feather token. The anchor variant... Uh, use an action to touch the token to a boat or a ship, making the, uh, the thing vanish. And that will stop the boat, and the vessel cannot be moved by any means for 24 hours. Oh, that's Ooh. cool. It's oh. an emergency break for boats. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, one, right, one time use, boat. but yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, where would you like to go? Because you can go, you don't have to go west. There's uh, east and up the, the T-junction. There's back to that door that um, Hank is certain is a wall. Um, plus there's also north in the original chamber as well. So the one with the bullywugs in it. You've gone fully sure. silent. Okay. Have I? Yeah, I oh. didn't hear anything. I'm sorry, said, Discord probably had, had a moment there. Yeah, so you've you've got choices. So you can go um you can go east into this into this new room. You can go west to the T junction and see what's north there. You can go back mm. through the bullywug room and up north there, or through the door that Hank is certain is a wall. We do have a wall. We have evidence that walls can be bypassed now. Yeah. That's Who knows true. what might happen? Um, if you're looking into this room, look. you can see a mm -hmm. circular silver bowl. Um, well, it it fills the whole room. It doesn't fill the whole room, but it almost does. It is 30 feet wide, 20 feet deep in the ground. You can see pipes in the roof above, um, metal pipes. Oh, I forgot. No, I've got actual like I've got I've got actual box text on this one. I can actually read that out for you. So. In the center of this square dungeon chamber, the floor drops into a massive silver bowl. Shallow stone channels in the floor slope towards the bowl. Sewer pipes jut from the ceiling over each channel. A portcullis in the east wall blocks the way forward. Above the portcullis, a large glyph depicts a waxing crescent moon, its right edge illuminated by the faintest sliver of light. A large iron lever juts from the floor to the right of the portcullis. Is there anything in the bowl? There is nothing in the bowl at the moment. Now, this one is definitely a toilet. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, the horror must have been the bath. If you want to poop in a big bowl, I'm not going to stop you. Mm -hmm. I will question you. <laughs> Pull the <laughs> lever. Uh, wait, where was the lever? Uh, it's on the east wall, right next to the portcullis. Probably just opens up the portcullis. Like, what's uh, what's this big bowl about? You 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 guys know things. I'm gonna do it just assume I have no idea what this might be. You have no idea. I mean, you can make a check mm -hmm. if you would like to investigate it in some way. I'm not even sure where I'd start. To be quite honest, uh, is it actually made of silver or is it just silver color? 
it is made of silver. Can I make a careful search of the room? Is that okay? Yeah, absolutely. So that'd be a perception cool. check. That's fine. Uh, one minute. Hank will tap the silver bowl thing. Like, dong. Okay, 15. That's a good perception score. It's uh, ridiculous. Yeah. Um, so as you're looking through the room, there's these engravings on the wall. And again, there's it's just it's more... It, these engravings look like waterfalls and rain clouds and that sort of thing. Um... The pipes show sign of oxidization as if they perhaps have once carried water. Okay. And as you get to the um as you get to the portcullis, looking through there, you can see just distantly, it's quite dark. Those are definitely stairs down. Okay. Hmm. Um those engravings, are they you know, just just pictures, or are they a just language? pictures? Yeah, just pictures. Okay. All of the theme of waterfalls, okay. rain, deluges in general. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm, yeah, I'm going to investigate the the bowl on the pipes. I reckon. Okay. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Romy investigation. Okay. Hear that. Do, 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 do. 21. Okay. So the pipes, from what, what you can see of them, they've definitely contained water before. Possibly they still do. Uh, the bowl is really well made, so possibly something ceremonial or something like that. As you get sort of closer and touch it, it slightly wobbles, just a little bit. So it's not... 100% steady on whatever it's on. Whatever's supporting it. Interesting. There's also that glyph of a half moon above the portcullis. Sorry, not a half moon. It's of a crescent moon. Mm -hmm. And that is literally glowing. Like that faint crescent sliver of light. That's not. That light isn't coming from anywhere. That is actually glowing. Hmm. Like it's a like it's a spell. Yeah, possibly like yeah, uh, magic involved certainly. It may not be sure, a it. known written spell, but it is certainly magic. Okay, that's fine. Hank's gonna try and touch it. The sigil, cool. yeah, the symbol. Yeah. That's fine. You touch it. It feels a little tingly in your fingers, but you're okay. Yeah, it feels tingly. <laughs> Has anyone pulled the lever yet? No. I think that's. I, I don't think we have any other choice. Pull the lever, Hank. Hank will do as he's told. Mm -hmm. Okay, Hank, you pull the the lever, and there's a loud clunk. Uh, a something metallic sounding falls away beneath you, and the silver bowl shifts, and it only shifts about probably two or three inches downwards. Um, suddenly, you see that the... Nick, we lost you again for a second there. It only shifts up. Yeah. Oh, sorry. It only shifts a couple of inches. I'm s Discord's having a moment, I think. It only hmm. shifts a couple of inches, but it now sort of sits more steadily in the, in the hole. And above the, um, above the door, above the, the portcullis, the moon symbol is now half full. It's a, a half moon. Oh. I'm going to touch it again. Additionally, water starts gushing from the pipes above you into the channels. And uh, out of the pipes come four gelatinous oozes. Ooh. Mm. Initiative. Hey. We're going to use elemental blocks for it. They are not gelatinous cubes. I'll tell you that. Hey. Um... If you would like to identify them, you may. Sure. Uh, so you can roll, in this case, um, Arcana or Nature. Great. Um. Oh, nice. <laughs> Nothing but 20s at the moment for these <laughs> checks. That's fantastic. These are ochre jellies. Okay. 
and ochre jellies you would know are acidic um they are i'm going to give you a bit of information because with, with this 26 um they're amorphous and can sort of move through small holes and that's something that's how they were living in these tiny pipes mm. and don't use swords on them we will relay that <laughs> as okay that has a tendency to split them in half into two jellies Hank sadly puts the great sword back <laughs> Oh, Warhammer. Uh, <clears throat> let me just get their initiatives on that. Wow, one of them rolled a minus one. <laughs> okay. What's your, um, <laughs> your decks? Out of Oh, wait, one sec. I've got to, um... He's rolled initiative, yeah. Uh, I've not done initiative. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Well, then I need to know what the user's deck says. It's bad. It's bad. You're definitely going first. I'll put this at 16.9 so that you can... Are, are you sure? Uh, it's minus two. Mm. Oh, I can <laughs> Like, it's real bad. Okay. I Wait, rolled a the minus one for one of them. Negative decks. Not negative, but oh, okay. plus one. <laughs> oh, that's... Right. So, water is... You know, 20 intelligence, but everything else is fairly low. Oh. Water is starting to flow into this room. And... The bowl's quite deep, though, right? The bowl is water for a while. quite deep. Yeah, it can collect water for a while, and it is starting to collect the water. Sure. But it's coming in at quite a rate. Uh, let me put it this way. You can estimate the rate as about a 1,000 pounds of water every minute. What? Well, probably. Yep, after two minutes, the bowl will be full. That's okay. Like be fine. It's ages in combat time, it's fine. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. No, a minute is 10 rounds of combat. You're going to be fine. Yeah. You're going to finish a combat before <laughs> then. But it is flowing in. Um, right. Yeah, Afrian, over to you first. Um, yes. Yes. Arguably, I should say you're surprised, but I'm not that mean. <laughs> 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 um, okay. Well, what I'm gonna do is. I mean, first things first, the ballista's gonna. Yeah. The, the little. Axon is gonna do a. Yeah. Do a ballista bolt. Which I think was. Plus seven. I need to have that written down somewhere that's easier to get to. That's okay. Oh no, who's A? Why not? It's there. Yep. That hits. Ooh. Excellent. Do, 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 do. Five. Five points. And what damage type is that? Uh, force. Force. Okay. So that's five points of damage. And that was a ooze A, was it? Yes. Cool. Excellent. Oh, I was to push five feet away. Okay. Boom. <laughs> and yeah, it's slid across the floor. Absolutely. Um, Anything else? Yes. Um. Yeah. Yeah. Why not? Let's let's undo all of that movement by casting a uh, lightning lure. Um. Where's the rules for that? Did did it? Yes. So I need a strength saving throw. I'm sorry, I have the sizes wrong for these creatures. Oh. Whoa. Oh. I changed okay. things. Yeah. yeah <laughs> I thought they were medium. A lot. Baldur's Gate lied to me. They they are meant to be this size. <laughs> That's a lot of ooze. All right. <laughs> Jelly, sorry. You gotta do this anyway. I'm gonna need a strength saving throw from Ooze A as um a Ephraim. Okay. Spins the, the spear around. You know, this lightning growing out from it like a like a fishing line. Natural mini. one. Awesome. Excellent. Um, yeah, this is a terrible idea. It gets moved to here. Okay. As it lands on the bowl, part of it slides yeah. into the bowl. You notice mm -hmm. the the moon fill in more. Excellent. Ugh. Well, it, it then takes five lightning damage. Okay, it takes no lightning damage, but what it does do... 
great. They split. Oh. I'm going to need Albert not to call. From lightning damage. Interesting. Yep. Lightning and slashing. I gave you half the information because I'm a bastard. <laughs> you are. <laughs> But that's okay. Don't worry. Um, uh -huh. And they both go at the same initiative. Okay. Anything else? Surely one of them slid in, like splits into the bowl. Uh, yeah, I'll put one in the bowl. And that's pull fine. Pull out. Cool. There we go. Um, yeah, no, I think that's my turn. Okay, it's Ooze E who has just been birthed into existence. Um. Mm -hmm. It is going to attack you with its pseudopod. It's little tentacle-like thing. It's just going to bat at you. Um, so that is a 16 against your AC. Yeah, it doesn't hit. That doesn't hit. Well, that's failed then. It super doesn't hit. It's going to go around here and start climbing up the wall next to you. So it's now, it's, it's at the same height. It's just on the wall. Oh, it's doing a tunnel. Oozes do that. Ooze A is going to go between you and Vanston. So this is difficult terrain, but it has enough of a movement speed. Oh, it does not have enough of a move. Oh, you can get there. Ooh. Sorry, their movement speed is way lower than I realized. Um, that's it. That's as far as it can go because its movement speed thinking, is 10 yeah. feet and it, that's it difficult terrain. Slow. So um, it's going to attack. I think it's going to go for freeing because you've shown hostility already, but that might change soon. So another pseudopod. Um, Natural one. We're back. The dice rolls are back. <laughs> uh, B is going to go. This one is not on difficult terrain, so it's coming towards you. Uh, as a bit of its jelly enters the bowl, you see again the moon fills up a little bit more. Uh, and this one is going to try and strike Hank. There we go. That's a bit better. 22 to hit. I don't hit. Okay. You are not raging currently, I imagine. Yeah. Um, so you're going to take seven bludgeoning damage and three acid damage. Okay. Uh, then we have two more oozes. Let's do ooze C, attacking with advantage. Okay, that's a natural 19, so that's going to hit. Okay. And... That is going to do nine bludgeoning Oof. and six acid. Oof. Uh, and then lastly, Ooze D is coming in against Vanston. Wait, no, it isn't. No? No. Why not? Because I'm in, I'm in the initiative oh, before. Oh, D is last. Sorry, I yeah, thought they were all going. Down, down. No, you're quite right. Yep. You oh, are next. Just, Sorry. Right. So I'm going to move here. Good idea. <laughs> I was my original plan because they're going yeah. to move slow. Yeah. Uh, I'm then going to uh, right. So who's a? Uh, I I would like a DC 14 Dex save, please. Oh, they are so bad at dexterity. I thought they might be. That's an unnatural zero. Great. <laughs> <laughs> have Ooh. eight radiant yeah that's that's gonna do it uh so that's ooze a gets eight points of radiant damage that is now a bloodied ooze <laughs> how does that work when well it's just yeah, leaking point. Ooze from the ooze <laughs> it's leaking <laughs> acid ooze. yeah it's it's kind of yeah. like um it's like when you slice open like uh, a fresh mozzarella ball or something that makes sense <laughs> 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 Everyone sit with that image for a while. Yeah. <laughs> uh, anything else? But that's already great. Is it still me, isn't it? No, I'm I'm good. That's my turn. Okay, over to you, Hank. Okay, uh, guys, I'm I'm really in bad shape here. Uh, yeah, that that's this is very sore. It much more than tingles. Mum definitely lied to me. Um, <laughs> right. Oh. Okay. Uh, Warhammer time. Doesn't uh, yeah. make you angry. <laughs> Perhaps. <laughs> it makes me hankry. Yeah. 
Yeah, are you raging? Is the is the ultimate question before you yeah. break the Warhammer out? Okay, yeah, getting angry. Raging. Here we go. By the way, this will be your second again, so you'll get a free short rest after this. So, I can need it. Yeah, you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. If anyone can do anything to heal me on the next uh, turn, if you'd said exciting. something earlier, I could have, but you didn't. I, I had a lot of jelly in my mouth. Uh, That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. Um, okay, so uh, yeah, Warhammer um, nice. against. Let's go with B because it hit me first. Okay. Uh, and I'm two handing this. Nice. That Extra is a damage. 23. <laughs> oh, yeah, that hits. And oh, I need a D8. No, a D10 in fact. Uh, just two handing. There we go. Okay. Plus five. Nice. That is 8 damage. 8 damage, eight. that's good. That's good. Um, nice and damage. I'm going to move into the bowl. Okay. Yeah, you get in the bowl. Absolutely. Um, <clears throat> it's difficult terrain. You can obviously keep going if you want, but there will be attacks of opportunity. It's, it's far enough. Okay. It is finally Uzdi's turn. Uh, five, ten. Well, no, sorry. That's five. That is ten, because it's mostly out of the bowl. It's not in difficult terrain at the moment. No, no, no. Um, but again, that moon fills up even more. You think that moon's about three-quarter full um, right now. <laughs> and it's going to strike at Vanston with the pseudopod. That's probably not going to hit, I don't think. 14, Vanston. That's not going to hit. No, get out misses. Of here. Can't, get past the, uh, can't get past the armor. That's its entire go. And a free in. We go to you. Hmm. We need to get them in the bowl, Nefrain announces to everyone. Fills up the moon and um, goes for a grapple on Ooze E. Okay, love it. Right, so that's going to be contested by the Ooze's uh, athletics instead of <laughs> acrobatics. Uh -huh. Let's see what we get. All right, you have to beat a 14 with your athletics check. Uh with athletics yes okay <laughs> yeah, yeah. that is a grappled ooze absolutely excellent i want to be like trying can i try and move it now that i've yep. got it you can use your movement to move a grappled thing um it costs you double movement but that's fine okay so to move it here would be 10 feet movement uh yes yes cool and then 20 feet. There we go. Nice. And okay. So it fills up a little bit more. Let me do some mathematics. Um, I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to reveal the thing. The moon fills in as more weight goes in it. Um, so at half filled, once the bowl landed on the scale, um, you need to get a total of 2,000 pounds. Was it 2,000 or 4,000? 4, 4,000 pounds of weight uh, on the scale for it to fill. <laughs> There's, the bowl itself weighs 2,000 pounds. So that got you to half. Each ooze at full size is 500 pounds. And uh, so we're at the moment, these halved ones, that's 500. It's both of those. You got half of ooze D, so that's another 250. 250 from ooze B and 250 from ooze C. So that's 750 plus 500, 1,250 plus 2,000, 3,250 plus however much Hank weighs. Hank, how much do you weigh? See, uh, what did I say he weighs? He weighs 188 pounds. Okay, so you're not quite there, but you're not you're not far off. That thing almost looks completely full. Okay, well, I'll move there. Now okay, 450 the pounds. Moon fills up and the portcullis opens. <laughs> <laughs> you weigh 450 pounds. No, that does make sense. You got oh, that total. shell. Yeah, you got that shell. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you got that oh. external rib cage. Oh, yeah, total shells out of the rib cage. Just FYI. Makes sense. Gross, but makes sense. But yeah, the portcullis yeah. is open. Excellent. Uh, that's my turn. <laughs> Very nice. We go to the oozes, except for ooze D. I will remember that. Um, so. E is not going to try and break the grapple. It's just going to attack you because it honestly, you touching it is 
what it wants. That's yeah. not right. Um, but anyway, pseudopod. <laughs> uh, natural five, so that's not going to hit. Uh, nope. Then we have Ooze A, who's going to go for Vanston, I think. That's a 14, which we've previously established doesn't hit. Correct. Uh, then we have Ooze B and Ooze C, who are going to go against Hank. Um, they're going to move like that and like that, surround you properly. The moon overflows. Uh, that's another 14. So does that hit, Hank? Hits. Hits, okay. And we'll see it's if uh, C hits as well. That's a natural 18, so that's definitely going to hit. Uh, okay. I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm down, boys. All right, for the first one, uh, eight bludgeoning. I'm down. Uh, and some acid, but that'll get negated. It's not going to be enough to be your hit point maximum. The second one is also going to hit, and that is two death save failures. Hey, Jesus. Because if you are hit when you are within five feet and you are unconscious making death saves, it's an automatic critical hit, and critical hits are two death save failures. Right, yes. Hank's in the danger zone. We go to Vanston. Uh, right. What can I practically do about that uh, from my current... Well, in general, and also from my current position? Any healing will pick Hank back up and erase all the death saves. Oh, right. I'll do any healing then. Yep. Um, so... <laughs> healing word going to be getting um uh, will it also do like its normal amount of healing as well yes it does yeah okay right i am going to uh burn a level two slot on cure wounds okay so that's great that's yes. gonna get that right do i yes yeah yeah, that's tough. Touch? Oh, no, I thought that was one of the ranged ones. Damn. What's the ranged one? Healing, Healing word. word. If you have that one. Healing word. Hmm. I don't know about that. Okay. Well, I'll need to try and get over there then, which is much worse. Um. So, that whole, the bowl is difficult terrain, right? Yeah. And I'm also going to take opportunity attacks if I move out of the way of these oozes. Yeah. You can yeah. jump to clear some of that without it costing difficult terrain. Interesting. Um, how does jumping work? Is that just a movement action? Uh, it's part of your movement. Uh, it costs right. uh, movement as per normal, so it's as if you're walking. Your long jump distance is up to your... up to half your strength score. Not your modifier, your score. Oh, right. In feet. All right. It, that's not very many feet, unfortunately. Is that rounding? Yeah, it doesn't matter where it's rounding. Like, so that's going to be... Like, like, that is one square for me. Okay. Also, I'm wearing a lot of crap. <laughs> uh, um, if you can get a 10-foot run-up, you can double that distance. But that then is probably costing you enough movement that it's... Yeah, yeah, out. yeah. I need to, like... I would need to go back and all kinds yeah. of stuff. Okay. Um, so if I just run into the bowl then how many how many squares is that uh that so move. assuming going that way uh that'd be 5 mm -hmm. 10 15 20 25 um so that'd be the distance you can get right yeah that's very unfortunate right. let's let me just make one but quick if you, check hang on see. you can go five jump mm -hmm. uh to there for yeah. another five so that's ten and then 20. So you can get to it if you do a jump halfway through to get over some God, of the different terrain. Okay, I'll yeah. do that then. The terrain rules are uh, weird. <laughs> God, whatever works. Am yeah, I going to take... How many, how many AOs am I going to take if I do all that? Two. Only two? Oh, three. Yes. Yeah, three. That's three attacks. Many. All right. Jumping Let's... through the ooze ease range, that counts? it's a jump uh, it's only when you leave the range uh, it doesn't matter how you leave though unless you're forced to leave uh, you can okay. jump to here and stay in its range and then get to here but that's a very good point actually sorry yeah if you go to there you'll only take from A and D good point right I'm doing that okay roll the damage or roll the hits 
Uh, first Please one right. is a 14, which we know doesn't hit. Mm-hmm. Second one is a 18, which probably does. That does hit. Okay, that is 11 points of bludgeoning damage. Cool, I am down. Oh no. Mm. So you oh, arrive nice. unconscious there. You don't take extra death saves because you that was the that was you was only one attack, so there wasn't another mm. one coming in afterwards. Uh okay, that's Manson's go. Hank. Would I even get that far? I'd be like here, right? Uh I'll I'll allow you to slide in. That's fine. Okay, that's fine. not a problem. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Hank, and this is very dangerous right now. I need a death saving throw. Okay. If you roll a 9 or lower, you are dead permanently. Okay. Come on. Oh, that's a 19. (laughs) There we go. That's good. That's good. One success. Uh, Uzdi can't really reach... Oh, no. Can't reach you, Awanin. It's going to move 10 feet. (laughs) That's it. That's all it can do. Have to be pretty long reach to reach Awanin in the Dwarven Mines. Oh, it can't reach you a free and sorry. A free and over to you. Mm-hmm. You've got two people down. Okay, Hank's very close question. to death. Vance is probably okay for one round, but you probably don't want to leave it too long. Does, does bonus HP help or only real HP? Temporary hit points temporary. do not help at this point. It has to be actual hit points to bring Great. someone back up. Great. Okay. Yeah. If you have healing potions, that can work. Alternatively, if you've got nothing that will do any healing... What you can do is make a DC 10 medicine check to stabilize someone. They won't get back up, but they won't take any more death saves. No, I, I do. Um, okay. Okay. Um, stuff it. Who's A can't hit me? It's fine. I move here. Take an attack of opportunity. Uh, 15. No. Super Didn't no. think so, not uh, without shell. <laughs> <laughs> well, and the shield. Freyan has a shield. Um. Oh, yeah. Okie dokie. And then I will do um, cure wounds on Vanstone. Great. So Vanstone can heal. Okay. Hey, that's my plan. Okay. It's a healing wounds chain. That's a good point. That's a good point, because Vanstone Thank will you. go before yeah. Hank. Yeah. Yeah. Um, After several oozes. After several oozes, yes. After several oozes, yes. Okay. Um, Well, Uzi is going to strike at you, Awanen. Oh, sorry, you haven't done the healing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Sorry, sorry. Um, So it's... Do, 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 do. Cure wounds is 1d8 plus spellcasting modifier, which is 5. Get healed. 10 hit points. That's and nice. Thanks. So you're yeah. you're back to consciousness. You get to go on your your turn. You're not making any death saves. Cool. Who's E against yeah. the one in miss? Um, <laughs> Natural six. All in's not here. Uh, a free <laughs> in. Uh, a... God damn it! Yeah. It's because the tokens are identical. Yeah, I, I should do my bonus action first, though. Oh, um, sorry. I'm so sorry. You do your bonus action. That's all right. I'm gonna. Yeah. The the cannon's gonna. Um. Where can the cannon go? The cannon can't go anywhere. So we're going to do a ranged attack at disadvantage because we're in close range. Yeah, um, you're pretty pretty well surrounded. You can always swap yeah. to the other form of the cannon if uh, if that helps. No, because I used my action. Ah, that, that's that true. Takes Good action. point. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. So we're going to disadvantage, but it is plus seven, so. Plus seven. I mean, these, they don't have a ridiculously high AC, so. E. Who's E? Yeah. Nine? That hits. So, for future reference, yeah. AC eight. Wow. Yeah, Excellent. they're pretty fucking hittable. Um. <laughs> Take six damage and goes there. Six damage. Nice. And pushes them back, which is very helpful. Okay, a good bonus action. So, who's so, A yeah. and. Uze's coming in and he's going to try and whack. Uh, again, that's not going to hit. That's a 14. Nope. Tanks. Uze <clears throat> is going to go for you, uh, Freyan, but can't get to you. 
because Hank's not back up, so there's no point. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, I missed Uzbi. Uzbi is going to try and hit Vanston. No, that's a natural free. Cool. Vanston, we're over to you. All right. Uh, uh, I am, now that I am facing the right way again, I am going to heal Hank. Yep. Um, so that's going to be 2d8 plus spell bonus. Which is uh, right. So it's two year plus like, and it's the it's the wisdom bonus, not like spell type bonus or anything. Okay. Uh, yeah, it's just your wisdom bonus. Sorry. No problem. Thirteen, 13 hit, points. hit points. Nice. Yeah, Worth okay. noting, Hank, you are not raging. Uh yeah. That ends on unconscious. Mm. Anything else, Vanson? Um. Great question. I'm going to. Yes, uh bonus action yeah I'm not gonna do anything I think okay sounds good Hank mm -hmm. you're back in Ooh. okay thanks Manston all right let's kill him <laughs> um yeah the um the rage is back on my third and final rage for this uh long rest nice and the Warhammer is back out. Yep. Both hands. And was it B I attacked before? I think it was B I attacked. Uh, um, B so has definitely been damaged, I'll tell you that. Right. Whacking B. And that is an 11. 11 hits. That hits. And D10 plus 5. That is 9 damage. 9 damage. Very good. Do they have different stats at the different sizes? Uh, their hit point maximum is halved. Okay. Hmm. And Hank will move. Actually, no, Hank will stay close. <laughs> but they otherwise deal as much damage and stuff like that, so they are very, very scary when they when they slice in half. Uh, Uzd, mm -hmm. Uzd is going to go for a free in because Uzd can't reach anyone else and is not going to hit. Uh, Uzd is going to get in closer. <laughs> okay, top of the round, a free in. Um, yeah. I... Oh, hang on. Um... What's everyone's constitution like? For doing saving throws? Um... They got a plus two. You've got to have more than that, Hank. Surely. Hank did not roll great on his, uh... On his, oh, um... Oh, God. Rolls. Low con um, barbarian, no. <laughs> No, the, the no. Con mm. saves. Uh, oh, for con save. Oh, the con save yeah. is four. Um, for Hank. Sorry. I got a plus one there. Hank will Hank shout to a free. And look, if, if you've got your your magical healing thingy, uh, that could probably be handy. I I do not. Um, but ah, stuff. I'll get a long rest soon. I, I am going to burn a spell slot to, yes, um, have the axe a little calm down, and then it's it's Gilfro glows green now, and then it does make a big green healing bubble, which okay. does. Do, 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 do. From my so position, I think this was yeah. the best choice. Because <laughs> that temporary hit, hit points is really nice. <laughs> yeah. Good news. You all have 10 temporary hit points. Hell yeah. I will take those. Yeah. And a free can do that every turn. <laughs> I can. It's great. Anything else, a free -in? Um, no, that's my action and my bonus action. Okay. Who's E's coming in? Uh, and it's going to do its best to hit you. Like, it's really upset. Vanston being up <laughs> means it does not have advantage and it misses. Who's A against a free in? Miss. Uh, Who's B is going to be against Hank? Does a 15 hit you, Hank? Yep. Okay. Oh. 
You take seven points of bludgeoning and two points of acid. True. Do I halve both of them or do I add them together and then half them? Uh, you don't halve acid. I do because I have the bear totem. Oh, your bear totem. Um, then you can add them together and halve them. Um, okay. That make, that so, that was how that would work. Half to five. And remember, that goes off your temporary hit, hit points as yeah. well. So you, you've still got more health than you had before a free and did what they did. <laughs> yep. um, and then Usi is going to try it as well. Ooh, natural 17, so that's going to hit. These things can't hit the other two. They <clears throat> bash me to shit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, five bludgeoning, one acid. I, I so, did it, though, pretty bad. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's fair. Okay. Yeah. Six points total, half to three. So that's not too bad. I don't you think know, I've managed to not be hit by any of these things. You've struggled. <laughs> well, you're a barbarian. You're not known for your AC. You're known for your hit points. And resisting everything. Vanston, over to you. Oh, God. There's so there's so many oozes. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> there's, there's just a lot of ooze in every like the more, you jelly bowl. Use a sword and you'll get even more. Uh, so if we if we did that, we could cut the you know we could gradually reduce the hit points and maybe Zeno's power. Up, wait, um, so <laughs> the action economy is bad enough. <laughs> um, I was gonna say, does any of them look injured? No, they all look like ooze. <clears throat> Actually, yeah, one of them is injured. Uh, Ochre Jelly A is injured. A right, okay, wow. Um, I I guess you know if we can start wiping them out one by one, we can maybe focus fire a bit more. So let's try let's try that. Okay. Um, okay, jelly A, <clears throat> deck save please. All right, nine. You will have one radiant damage. Oh. <laughs> Spell stuff. I need to stop using it. I'm sorry, oh. everyone. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's pretty guaranteed damage, really, but... It's just not much yeah. guaranteed damage. Mm. Yeah, uh, I should when you get to fifth level, that will oh, do well. a lot more damage as well. <clears throat> right. Let's check. Let me put that in. Okay. Um, any uh, bonus action? Uh, I wish I could say there was, but I can't really see much. That would help. So okay. No. okay. Over to Hank. Okay. Um, I I think he's still just going to uh, whack with the Warhammer. He hasn't got much else he can do, and he doesn't have any more um, bonus action for anything, so... It's a good okay. hammer. Yeah, let's do it. It's a 23. That hits. What? Yeah. Ah, uh, that's crook. Nine damage. Nine damage is good. Uh, who was that against? Uh, B. B, excellent. Okay. B is also now bloodied of sorts. Anything else, Hank? Um, no, 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 I don't think, I think that is all. Okay. Who's D? Who's D is going to go for a free in because Jesus Christ, this turtle is annoying me. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that is a 22 to hit. Yeah, that might hit, yeah. It's finally time to take some damage, Afrian. Only on the temporary hit points. Though. Yeah, well. Nine bludgeoning, six acid. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's wow. a hefty hit. Um, that's 28. Okay. And back round to you to presumably re up everyone's temporary hit points. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's a good idea. I will do that. Seven. Okay, if you had more than that before, you still have the higher amount. Yes. It doesn't add on, does it? It just replaces it. Doesn't it doesn't add. It, it just, just replaces it if it happens to be higher than what you've already got. Yeah. And um, then I'm going to stab Ooze. Ah, look, the smart thing is to stab Ooze A. It is. But Ooze D did just hit me. That is true. You're not in an extremely dangerous situation. You can be. You can be. You can afford to be suboptimal. 
I mean, yeah, I think, your shoulder I think, again. I think, a, I think a friend's, you know, brainy enough to to tough this one out and attack Uze. Yeah, you're an artificer. You've got what? 18 intelligence. You're no 20. <laughs> yeah, you yeah, you have the maximum amount of <laughs> intelligence you can have. <laughs> Um, yeah. So, I'm gonna stab Uze with the, uh... Do it. Actually, wait. Wait, 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 hang on. Oh, no, yeah, 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 I'm gonna stab Uze with, with the spear. Okay. It is not slash damage. Hits. 17. Oh, yeah. Let me do six. Plus four. Six damage. Six, six piercing damage. damage. Okay. That jelly explodes. Not in a way that's dangerous to you, but it dies. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, for the exploded jelly yeah. all land inside the bowl. Yeah, the jelly all lands inside the bowl. It still counts for right. the weight. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, anything else to free? Um. Yeah, I'm gonna. Yeah, I'm gonna. I'm gonna move that. Yeah. Okay, attack of opportunity from Z. Yeah. E. Uh huh. That is a 19 to hit. <laughs> Just barely hits. Okay, 12 points of bludgeoning, 6 acid. Ooh. Yeah, I can't hit you, but when I do, I roll max on the dice. <laughs> I don't know what's going on there. So it's 12 and 6. Gosh. Yeah, 18 total. Ooh. Yeah, these things hit like trucks. Uh, yep. Okay. Did you say these things are CR1? Nope. Oh, I see. <laughs> the, the level is CR1. The level is uh, CR1 roughly, CR1 but you get some leeway as to what you, you get on there. That's fine, um, carry on. It's Ooze's. Uh, Ooze E is going to strike at Vanson. Right, that's not going to hit, that's a 13. Uh, Ooze B is going to strike at Hank. That's a 16. That hits. Okay, C is going to go for a free in while I'm here rolling dice. That's a 14. That's not going to hit a free in. Uh, Hank, no. you take uh, six, eight points of bludgeoning and four acid. 12 total. Uh, six. So, yep. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and that's Counts one temporary hit point. All of them. I think Uzi is going to move there. So it's getting even closer <laughs> into penning you all in. Um, Vanston, it's over to you. Um, right. Did Hank mess up Ooze-B earlier? Yeah, Ooze-B is injured, certainly. Hmm. It's bloodied, hmm. you said. Yeah. yeah, it's bloodied. I think I'm going to Guiding Bolt B. Okay. That's what's going to happen here. So that's a dex save, I think, isn't it, Guiding Bolt? No, that's the other spell. This one is, I'm rolling a ranged attack. That's right. Okay, so you're in melee, so you're going to have to do it at disadvantage, but the other plus side is their AC is very low. Okay. I did not realize about the disadvantage thing. That's annoying, but I mean, we'll you can choose not to if you want. Like, you you would know that it would be a disadvantage in in met. Like, your character would know. So yeah, I just I don't have to. a I don't have a better way of like applying damage at this point. So I'll just I'll just go for it in two hands. That's fair. Yeah, you're fine. That didn't, that didn't, that didn't <laughs> great. Um, you're fine. Cool. Let me just think. That was uh, oh, it's the forty six one, isn't it? Yeah. So that's cool. 10. 10 points is enough. <laughs> no way. So, right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Hank had done actually a pretty good amount of damage and pushed it quite high up. It had eight hit points left at that point. Nice. Um, the, the good oh thing about God. these dudes is they don't have a ton of health, but they do hit heavy. Um, they mm, are yeah. very glass cannony. But yeah, great hit. Uh, and your the action economy is coming around to your favor now. Anything Ooh, else? Uh, I will stay put and not get hit. Okay, sounds good. Hank, over to you. Okay. So Hank is going to try to climb out of the bowl. Okay. So that's 10. That's 10. 15. 15. And he's going to get around the back of UC. Okay. Now, this is a melee, right? Yeah. Or is this flanking? It, it's, a, it's, it's a it's a melee. There, there's too many creatures in there that, that you're not you're not getting the flanking oh, okay. benefit on UC. Um, mainly because D here is distracting a free and okay. Andy. Uh, so yeah, uh, 
Now, if I switched to dual wielding mm -hmm. with my bonus action hit, that's that's without the um, modifier to hit. Is it also without the modifier to damage? It's without the modifier to damage only, I think, not to hit. Oh, okay. Would would I still get the rage bonus to the hit, to the damage? Yes, absolutely. Okay. So they have to be light weapons, light melee weapons, both of them. Um, uh, but yeah, uh, uh, you don't add your ability modifier to the damage okay. of the bonus attack. That's it. So you can still add to the attack. Yeah, that's the problem. My other light weapon is a short sword, so I, I'll stick with the Warhammer <laughs> dual wielding. Go for it, it'll be fun. <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, right, okay. Um, plus five, 21 to hit, and a seven damage. Seven damage. That's pretty good. It's a good start. That's the first damage it's taken. D is also um, un undamaged, right? That's right. Yeah. E yeah. is taking a bit of damage, though. And mm -hmm. you would know has half the hit point maximum of the others. All right. Come on, oozes. <laughs> Are you trying to taunt the oozes? Yeah. <laughs> like, I guess he's also a little bit above Uzi right now, so he smacks with the hammer and he gives it a pat on the, uh, on the top. <laughs> Okay, who's D is gonna go for a free in though? Uh, that, oh, well, I've rolled a free. Oh, a free in over to you. Yeah. Um. <laughs> well, everybody gets some temporary hit points. Do do do. Have eleven. Eleven's nice. good. I will. Yeah. And then I'm gonna stab at who's E. Yeah. Plus six. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. That's hit. a hit. <laughs> yeah. Oh, definitely. Yeah. yeah. Double what you needed. And um. <laughs> and a big old stab of nine. Ah, that's good. That's really yeah. That'll do it. Um, let me just add nine on. Okay, so that one is now injured. Seeping mm -hmm. acid. Uh, I assume that's everything Excellent. from you, afraid. Uh, yep. Okay, this one is going to move around Vanston and try and get away from Afrian. and Afrian, and you will be able to make an attack of opportunity if you like. Let's go. Um, let's. Uh, oh yeah, I just did this. Why am I confused about what my two hitters? Um. <laughs> Shit. Yeah, that is. <laughs> I should have just disengaged. <laughs> Five damage is exactly what you needed to do. Nice. <laughs> Goodbye, Uzi. Uzi is gone. Uh, bugger. <laughs> I should have disengaged. Okay. Well, they're, they're stupid. That's fine. I can be stupid when running them. Um, <laughs> Uzi then is going to go for Hank. Uh, that is a 12 to hit. That does not hit. Yay! Uh, finally. finally happened, and we go to Vanston. <laughs> cool. I'm it. gonna... I'm gonna mace who's D, I think. Sounds good, yeah. Classic mace. Uh, yeah. Well, I did not mace it. No. Unless your modifier Continue. is plus six. Um, it is not. No. Uh, Hank, over to you. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, same again. Uh, Warhammer... Oh, uh, isn't that one? That's not hitting. No. This is it. It's the user's time. They're gonna get. They're gonna turn this around. I've got a good feeling for them. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else, Hank? Um. Wait. Did one of these have a guiding bolt on them? Uh, they died. Oh, it the died. Bolt. Yeah. Uh, okay. You, you guided too hard. That's yeah. the sad thing about guiding bolt is it has this additional rider. But it does so much damage, you never get to use it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, is that everything? Yeah, that's Hank? me. That's, that's, okay. Who's D? Who's uh, D is going to move up like this, and is going to strike at Vanston. 
That is an 18 to hit. Man, get out of here. All right, fine. And that is four, six points of bludgeoning and two acid. Okay. So I don't think that even takes you down to all of your temporary hit points. I am still in temporary hits, yeah. Yeah. Uh, that is, I tell you, that cannon is ridiculous at low levels. It doesn't scale very well later on, but at low levels, it is ridiculous. This cannon well, has I mean, done a, a, a four-person siege on a castle before. And back to the cannon to give everyone 20 fucking HP. <laughs> so it doesn't scale super well, but eventually I can have two of them. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> and you can activate both with the same action. Yeah. Um, the cannon's great. It's, it's fantastic, but... <laughs> Whew. It is more... Yep. 11 there you go. 13 more temporary hit points. <laughs> Wait, is that the right dice? It sure is. Wow. <laughs> it should and, be an um, action to use the cannonite, in my opinion, but there we are. <laughs> Wizards <laughs> made their decision. Apparently they didn't test sure it. They sure did. <laughs> I they did, but I bet the other players they tested it with used the attacky modes more. I, I can tell you, you, I can genuinely tell you what the answer is. Uh, the person who designs D&D &D plays an artificer. Um, oh, okay. genu genuinely does. That's not, a, that's not sarcasm. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm going to stab Ooze D. Yeah. Do it. Okay. Yeah. That'll hit. They're very yeah. easy to hit. Five, Five points of damage. damage. That's the first damage Uzi has taken. Nice. Okay, over to Uzi. I think mean, Uzi thinks his best choice is to hit Hank. Because um, it's not very wise. And it doesn't realize that Hank keeps getting temporary hit points. Nah, that's a natural two. That's not a hit. Um, Vanston, over to you. Okay. I'm going to mace D. Okay. That'll... I'm not gonna fucking mace oh, D. Right, carry on. Do you have any modifier to your mace, or is it? No. Oh, it's flat. Okay, fair enough. Yeah. You need Dang. to get you shillelagh. Shillelagh would be really good for you, actually. Uh, it is a druid Can't spell, but um, you, there are feats that give you access to other spell things. But what I'm it does is means you feats. attack on, with wisdom. Anyway. <laughs> yeah. uh, but yes, Hank, over to you. All right. Um, so I think. I have mapped and realized that short sword is piercing rather than slashing. So Hank will swap to um, the short sword and club combo. Okay. And leading with the short sword. Wow, short sword is piercing. Huh. Yeah. I guess Wild you got break. the scimitar for slashing. But... Yeah. Uh, okay, so it is plus five to hit. That is 16 to hit. That hits. So 1d6 plus five is eight. Piercing damage. Eight's good. Yeah. And with the club. So you said this is the modifier to hit, but not the, the modifier for damage. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Except That's it does do your range. 16 to hit. And then four plus two. Sorry. Is five damage. Another five damage. That's good. I mean, you just done almost 20 points of damage in one turn, which is great for your level. Right. God damn. Yeah. Uh, we go to Uzd. Uzdi's going for a free in. I, uh, I forgot I can target the bloody turret. Um, but anyway, <laughs> you that's, that. I always forget I can target the turret separately. I don't have to target a free in. I can take the turret out, but mm. I've already rolled it. I, it's a uh, 20 free to hit a free in. Yeah, that'll hit. The ooze doesn't know that. The ooze doesn't know that. No, apparently. Uh, so that is seven bludgeoning and free acid. Nice. Um, we go to a free in. Um, just, you, you can you can target it while I'm holding it. That's I believe annoying. so. Mm -hmm. I will. I will check. I will check the no, rules. I believe you. Annoying. <laughs> That's why they give you its AC and hit points. 
and how to heal yeah. it. Yeah, well, but also because um, it can be a medium-sized object that is then just like walking around. I'm going to say it's targetable because it's, uh, there's nothing that says if you're holding it that it can't be targeted. Okay. Because I think technically you can like attack people's swords as well. Like nothing says you can't. <laughs> In fact, half the spells specifically <laughs> say it doesn't affect things that are being held, um, which must mean the default is oh, that sure. it does. Sure. There you uh, go. 11 temporary hit points. Yep. Like, 11 temporary it. hit points. Mm. And I'm going to stab Booze D again. Oh, I've just checked what the AC of the, tur the turret is. It's basically the same as yours. <laughs> Fucking hell. <laughs> I've it's got like no better 18? luck yeah. targeting it, yeah. yeah it, <laughs> it's higher than a one in, but lower than a three in with a shield. <laughs> <laughs> How much damage was that? Um, haven't rolled damage yet. Oh, sorry. Is, My bad. That's all right. I just worked down it hit, so you're nine damage. Nine well, damage. Like uh, was that against D or C? D against D. Against D, very good. Okay. Who's It's going to turn on a free and try and get this <laughs> bloody turret. <laughs> nope. That's a 14. <laughs> Vanston. That would have hit Hank. It would have hit Hank. I should I should have just kept going. Nice. <laughs> hey. Hey, 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 there it is. Hey. <laughs> Very good. Seven. Oh, seven oh, damage. Nine. That's great. Nice. Um, that's that's a, that's a good chunk of damage. Both of them are pretty close to being at the injured point. You're sort of taking them both down equally. Excellent. Okay. Um, that's, yeah. Hank? Okay. Um, yeah, so the uh, short sword and club combo again. Mm -hmm. That is a... Oh, it's only a seven on the short sword that time. Um, I will use my inspiration to re-roll that. Oh, I had inspiration. And that is a 13 on the re-roll. Okay. Uh, 1d6 plus 5. That is 9. 9 damage. Very nice. Club. Okay, and that one now is definitely injured. Okay, uh, the club is 15 to hit. And then... That hits. 1d4 plus 2 is free damage. Very nice. It's getting there. It's definitely getting there. It's just whether it can take you out before then. Who's yeah. D's going for that fucking turret? <laughs> uh, that's a 17. One shy. Nope. <laughs> yeah. A free and over to you. Refresh everyone's hit points to maximum again. Correct. <laughs> Although I don't think it's necessary because no one got hit. Um, uh, yeah, indeed. That's fine. I think that's why it does anyway. so much damage and, and does so much healing is because you can target it and it does not have that many hit points. It does not. Although it currently has Nine 11 temporary, temporary hit, oh, 11, points. Yeah. yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. <laughs> um, yes, I'm okay. so I'm going to stab Ooze okay. D again. <laughs> okay, go for it. Yep, that hits. Yeah, I thought it was a one for a second there. Mm, it looked like it. Yeah, same. Can I just type there instead of clicking? I can. Nice. I have 10 damage. 10 damage. And that was against D. Yep. Very good. That one is also now injured. Excellent. And they've both taken basically the same amount of damage. So this is going to end sort of very abruptly when both <laughs> drop at the same time. <laughs> Um, Amazing that it's taken two people to damage Uz D as much as Hank has done to Uz C on his own. Well, <laughs> well, that's, you, that's if barbarians. If you had been helping me out, we would have killed this thing by now. Uz I mean, C is going to try and choke out this goddamn turret. No, <laughs> natural two. Advanced and over to you. Nope. Dex save from D. Dex save from D. That deck save is also yes. a two. <laughs> <laughs> Have five. Okay. Uh, oh, it's getting close. It's only got 10 hit points left. Over to Hank. Hank is annoyed that this thing is no longer paying attention to him, so he taps it on the top again and like knocking it on its <laughs> noggin. 
He's gonna poke it with the short sword again. The DM's specific vendetta mm. against this turret, not not anything okay. else. <laughs> uh, so twenty three to hit with that the hits. short sword, and oh, max damage eleven damage. Eleven damage. Um, yeah, that's club. that's good. Uh, the club's gonna hit with an eighteen. Okay, and... don't roll damage. That's enough to kill it. Hey. Yeah, two hit points left, and your rage damage right. alone would take it out. Okay, so Hank will um, move one, uh, five, ten. Is that in, or is that? In? If you move to the south of it, I w I can move around the other side on my next turn. Five, ten, and then I'll jump, and I'll jump in the bowl. Nice, okay. nice. Okay, Uzdi is not happy about the situation, but frankly is blinded by anger, and so am I. Uh, it's it's going for the turret, because I want to see if I can hit that thing once. <laughs> nope. A freeing. <laughs> you probably don't even need to re-up the, uh, the temporary hit point bubble at this point, but feel free to if you wish. I, I really don't, but I'm going to. <laughs> Everybody has max temporary HP, but it's fine. Yeah. Um, ah, it's fine. I'm fine. I'm not angry. If your friend's as upset about Sean as you are, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that, a that's a hit. And uh, five points five of damage. damage. Uh, it's getting there. It's getting there. Vanston, over to you. Hey, I'm going to move here. Yeah, good thinking. Yeah. Cool. I'm going to hit it with the mace. Yep, you've got advantage. I'll take that advantage. That's there we go. Oh, that's, <laughs> that's a good number, right? No. Do I yeah. roll, you roll, roll double again? the number of dice uh, for your Great. damage dice. That's absolutely fine. And then add the modifier once. 11. Okay, that kills it. Uh, uh, highly appropriately, it dies on a crit. Um, it had eight hit points <laughs> left, and yeah, 11, boom. And so these ooze, the ooze remains, they slip into the bowl and weigh it down, and you are able to proceed. However, it is 10.30, so we're probably going to stop here, but first I'll give you the experience for that fight. Mm -hmm. um, so each awesome. ochre jelly oh, nice. was worth 450 XP. So you've gained 1,800 divided by three, 600 each. Nice. Yeah. And that puzzle um, was written by Wizards of the Coast. Right? So you can blame them for the amount of damage <laughs> that you've just taken. <laughs> um, yeah, and you get a short rest, automatic, so you can spend as many hit dice as you want. Um, and yeah. you any short rest resources recover. I think clerics get channel divinity back on a short rest. Um, I don't think barbarians get anything back on a short rest, but hit dice are a nope. big resource for barbarians. So, because um, your health is divinity. essentially worth double. How many uh, channel divinity? Did you say to okay. get a um, long rest? Uh, you'll need two more. Okay. Think of it as a short rest every two, and then a long rest every six. So it's. Sh too short, too short, too long, too short, etc. Okay. I have a channel divinity thing that gives me a level one spell slot back. So can I spend that and then take the short rest to get the channel divinity back? Absolutely. Yeah, that's Great. totally fine. Yeah. So no, no, for the record, I've got no rages left. Nope. Out of rages. Yep. That got real close. Like that. Oh, I, yeah. I think we were one bad die roll away from two character deaths yeah so you you both you you pulled that back from the absolute brink um and i think all of you were invaluable in surviving that fight as well because oh they are they are scary creatures they haven't got much health but they hit so oh. hard like you saw that it was 3d6 every hit yeah that was a it, lot that's wow. it's uh, it's tons um mm. yeah how long do those temporary hit points last for? They last until your next long rest. Oh wow! Yeah, yeah. That is. This is my next upset. That is ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, I gotta say, genuinely ridiculous. Like, it's a bonus action every I'm turn. Like, I'm last for an hour. So. Yeah. How, how often can you do that? 
Um, one for a long rest and then spending spell slots to re-up yeah. it or change it. So it will have right. disappeared by the end of this short rest because the short rest is one hour long. Oh no, the short rest yeah. happens instantly because of the way we're doing this. Yeah. So you oh, still yeah, it got does. it. Yep. That might break a few things and I might need to rethink that. But for now, <laughs> it's still up. <laughs> no, it's fine. Don't worry yeah, about I'm it. Sure, I'm sure it's okay. <laughs> I'm sure it's absolutely fine. Uh, it'll be fine. It'll be fine. It's the worst. <laughs> um, yeah. Now we get yeah. to decide. Well, we have time. Between yeah, you, you've got time. You, you don't have to decide this right now. Going yeah. down, or if we're going to go, you know, any of the other doors, this one or this one or this one. I'll give you one more piece of information before we stop, and that is looking at this staircase, it goes a long way. You think this is not going just one floor down. Mm. Interesting. And I hear Imp's voice. <laughs> Calling back from hell. Uh, no. Um, so yeah, what I will say is this was absolutely the boss room <laughs> and you, you <laughs> nailed it. The sort of the, the boss of this floor. Um, and yeah, we're gonna we're gonna stop here. Um, thank you, thank you for the three of you for playing this. This um, it's been a bit of an experiment, but I think it's working. Um, I might oh, tweak no, a few I things. I really enjoyed the, the drawing yeah, cool. of the map thing and stuff. Like, there's some cool um, like hints, at encounters, and stuff. Yeah, I I very much enjoyed the hag. <laughs> the hag was yeah they're, they're good fun they're even more fun in uh areas where they can do because what they can do is they can make themselves look like like just average people sneak around get you cornered and then take on just one of you and that's that's how sea hags particularly actually night hags are even worse for it because they'll appear mm. while you're sleeping and attack um they're really good fun if you get them together though in a coven <laughs> i'm gonna have to do that sometime for Northmark. <laughs> they are great um, Does the coven yeah. all need to be the same type of hag? No, uh, it, you, almost always they're not. Oh, fuck. So you've got mm -hmm. this huge variety of abilities you've got to fight all in one go. And they get extra Great. power because they're all together. Yeah, they are. They're scary. They're scary creatures. But yeah, we're going to stop here. Uh, I will go to the outro screen and mute everything. And I will see you in a little bit.